weather, the playoff game on the road, and maybe this is another one. The ball in the air, the soft air on this beautiful Sunday, and Aaron Stecker takes the kick and brings it back to the 26-yard line. And let's take a look at the Tampa Bay offense. Brad Johnson, Florida State. Brad Johnson, Florida State. Michael Pittman, Fresno State. Mike Allstock, Purdue. Keyshawn Johnson, University of Southern California. Keenan McCardell, UNLV. Ken Dilger, Illinois. Roman Oven, Louisville Cardinals. Kerry Jenkins, Troy State. Jeff Christie, Pitt. Cozy Coleman, Tennessee. Kenyatta Walker, Florida. Really responded the last two weeks, especially last week against Philadelphia. So here they go as they bunch to the right, then send Allstott in motion. And Johnson throws to Allstott on the outside. He's taken down at the 30-yard line after a gain of three. Charles Woodson makes the tackle. And Brad Johnson, who's been in the league since he was drafted by the Vikings in 92, John, as it was the case last week, they're going without a huddle opening drive. That's the thing that John Gruden wants to do. Brad Johnson likes to play like this, and what they want to do is control the tempo and change the pace of the game, although this is the first or second play of the game. On second down and six, they hand the ball off to Pittman through the middle for a gain of one to the 31-yard line. So Gruden going to the no huddle. If either team would have gone no huddle, we would have said Oakland because they do it a lot. They dictated the pace last week against Tennessee. But Gruden, who's on the mic, he calls the plays in directly to Johnson, goes to it at the outset. Now he has him huddle again. Well, you know, last week they did the same thing. In fact, both of these teams started the game with no huddle. Third down and five now from the 31 yard line. Jerevicious in motion. And Johnson looking left and lofting it to the right, and it's picked off by Charles Woodson. An easy pick, and Woodson sets Oakland up in Tampa Bay territory. And this was a big thing. We talked about Brad Johnson if he gets time. Brad Johnson is not a mobile quarterback, so he's going to be a sitting target there. And you're going to see Reagan Upshaw is going to hit Brad Johnson just as he throws the ball. Watch Reagan Upshaw right here. You see he takes an inside move, then he gets a push, and he hits Brad Johnson. Brad Johnson was a cover two, and he didn't get anything on this. You see and he throws it a little short, and Charles Woodson was right there. And Charles Woodson playing with a plate in his leg, who missed a lot of time during the regular season. And a guy they figured to pick on, picked only one during the regular year. So the interception, the Raiders in good shape right off the bat at the 36 yard line as Gannon slings it to the outside and Garner is wide open and 125 is taken down by the other tackle there by Brian Kelly. Now the Raiders last week opened up in no huddle but Rich Gannon the league MVP saying let's huddle up right here. I think it's the same thing and you know, you know that they like to control the pace and and as Bill Callahan says he said we'll go in and out of that anytime that we feel that we're on a roll we're going to stay with it stay with that roll. Second and two at least for the next 20 minutes or so the Raiders on the sunny side of the field so all of the coaches will have to shade their eyes as Gannon fakes right and then throws incomplete over the middle and it'll be third down. Third and two and then Gannon looking over to the sideline Gannon will look over to the sideline a lot he will signal to the bench a lot he wants to know what personnel grouping am I going to get what play am I going to get and he likes it with alacrity right he likes to mark Preston to get the personnel to him right away so he can get that call and then get the play to him quickly so he can get up to the line of scrimmage with more time from the 28 on third and two Gannon to Brown and that's a first down at the 20 yard line. Dwight Smith makes the tackle the nickel back and he'll play most of the game today. Yeah and that's that's because the the Raiders are playing three wide receivers so the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are playing their nickel. Rondé Barber the right corner goes in and he plays on the slot and Dwight Smith is a corner that plays on the right side and that's the side that they're going to look to with three wide receivers from the 19 yard line to the ground now to Garner. And let's take a look quickly at the Raider offense. Rich Gannon, Delaware. 
Charlie Garner, University Untouchables. Jimmy Rice, Mississippi Valley State. Tim Brown, Notre Dame. Jerry Porter, West Virginia University. Doug Jolly, Brigham Young. Barry Sims, Utah. Frank Middleton, Beaumont, Texas. Adam Drew, Nebraska. Mo Collin, University of Florida. Lincoln Kennedy, Washington. All eyes on True, of course, the center in the absence of Barrett Robbins. Second down and nine now at the 18-yard line. Gannon setting up, moving out, and then is taken down at the 16-yard line, caught by the defensive end, Greg Spires. Here's the Tampa Bay D. Greg Spires, Florida State. Greg Spires, Florida State. Hurricane. Warren Sapp, Charter University Garvey, of Miami. Garvey. Hurricane. Charter Garvey, South Carolina State. Simeon Wright, School of Hard Knocks. Derek Brooks, Florida State. Shelton Quarles, Vanderbilt. Al Singleton, Temple. Brian Kelly, USC. John Lynch, Stanford. Dexter Jackson, Florida State. Rondé Barber, Virginia. Big interception last week to seal the game against Philadelphia. Third down and seven now. Gannon facing a four-man rush, but that's enough as Simeon Rice comes in to second. You know, in the play before that, it was Greg Spires that put the pressure on Rich Gannon. This time here, it's Simeon Rice on Barry Sims, and you're going to see him. He'll beat him to the inside. Now, you're always worried about that speed guy going to the outside. See, so he starts outside, Sims steps outside, and then Simeon Rice comes right inside, and he's right on Rich Gannon. Now a 40-yard attempt by Janikowski. Shane Leckler to hold, and Janikowski scores the first points of Super Bowl 37. After the Woodson pick, the Raiders strike first. 10:40 left in the first. Three nothing Oakland. In the Oakland Philadelphia Super Bowl in 80 Rod Martin intercepted a pass on the third play of the game and Oakland went on to win. So if you believe in omens Woodson intercepts the pass on the third play of the game. They lead three nothing. You know the other omen and, and both sides of this the defensive line is controlling the offensive line. <clears throat> that the you know the Buccaneers that was a heck of a stand down there and, and their speed showed when Gannon tried to run. And then, of course, the Raider got the big pass rush on Brad Johnson. Janikowski's second kickoff of the day. It's Aaron Stecker out past the 20, and the backup running back puts the ball down on the ground at the 30-yard line, and I'm looking to see if there's any indication yet that it was down. It's Eric Johnson who comes up with it, and there has been no signal yet from Bill Carollo or his crew as to whether his knee was down and now they're going to say it's a fumble and it wasn't and for the moment anyway pending a look at the replay and a possible challenge obviously it would be Oakland ball here it is you see Aaron Stecker goes down his knee was down before the ball came out in fact, he's trying to extend it. You see the knee is down, and the ball doesn't come out until he hits it with the ground, or he hits the ground with it. You see the knee is down right there, and right there the ball is down. So this is one of those plays that they call Raiders ball, but they will give this one back to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. No question on a clear-cut call. They're going to look at it. The only downside here for Tampa Bay Tampa, and I'll tell you in a second. challenging the ruling on the field. That was a fumble. We'll reveal the play. See, one of the things I think they're a little agonized about is you only get two challenges for the entire game. And so you're forced in a situation where you know they're going to overturn it, and clearly it's important, and you have to do it, but now you're forced to use one of those challenges. Yeah, but at least in using that challenge, if you win the challenge, what they will, you get the ball back. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you if you didn't challenge, then then they gave this ball to the Raiders. They said it was a fumble and it was a Raiders ball, but you can see Stecker's knee was down well before that ball hit the ground. I would think on the Tampa Bay side, there'd be some consternation that since this is so obvious, that they'd be a little missed that the, the officials oh, didn't get it right the to. first yeah, time. Yeah, and, right. and that's the thing that goes back to this same thing of all-star officials. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, all year they work as crews. And then when we get in the playoffs, the championship, the Super Bowl, they take the officials that graded the best. 
In other words, Bill Crow was our referee. He was the referee that graded the best all year. Mm -hmm. And these guys grade the best all year as individuals, but have never worked as a team or a crew. And I think that's a mistake. And I, I would bet in the next year or so that will be changed. Almost guaranteed, I would think, as Carollo refs his first Super Bowl. It's the second time he's officiated in the one. He was the side judge in the Dallas Pittsburgh Super Bowl, Super Bowl 30. So here comes what should be an overturn. After reviewing the play, it's been determined that the runner is down by contact. Tampa Bay will hit the ball, first and 10 at the 29 yard line. Tampa Bay has now charged a timeout. I think Aaron Stecker was saying the same thing that you were saying. How bloody you should have you should have called it that way in the first place. Absolutely. And all of the Bucks were, were angry when they came off the field as if to say, you know what, that's that's an easy call. And it, it might not matter, but then again, you only have one more challenge the rest of the way. And, and that's why instant replay was initially put in to, to right a wrong. There was a wrong, and then it was righted. From the 29 now, the Bucks' second possession beginning. Johnson throwing over the middle, and that pass is caught by Joe Jerovicious out to the 40 yard line. He's taken down by the middle linebacker, the rookie out of Northwestern, Napoleon Harris. Yeah, it was interesting when we were talking to Chuck Bresnahan the other day and, and talking about the, the wide receivers of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think he was as worried about Joe Jerovicious as any other receivers. He made the big play last week, the 71 yard reception, his only catch against Philadelphia. That's 11 yards of first down, and with no huddle here and an empty backfield, the pass is juggled and then dropped by Pittman and almost into the arms of Keyshawn Johnson, second down. Yeah, don't you feel that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are a little jittery? Yes. You know, they, I mean, even though that fumble wasn't a fumble, uh, you know, they go back to pass, and Brad Johnson gets hit, and the ball flops up in the air, and Charles Woodson gets it, and here you know, they look like, you know, he's making throws, and they're not ready yet, and... You know, I think John Gruden is trying to make this a fast paced game and maybe his team isn't ready yet to get in a fast paced mode. Second down and 10. Yeah, it's kind of a jumpy stuttering start to the game with five minutes having elapsed on second down Johnson lofting one and lofting it way out of bounds and he's way off the mark and gives us a chance to take a look at the Oakland defense. Breaking up y'all Pittsburgh high. Sam Adams, Texas A&M University. John Perella, Nebraska. DeLawrence Grant, Oregon State. Bill Romanowski, Boston College. Napoleon Harris, Dixmore University. Eric Barton, University of Maryland. Charles Woodson, Fremont Ross, Little Giants. Anthony Dorsett, University of Pittsburgh. Rod Woodson, Purdue. Tory James. Again, those two corners, Charles Woodson, Tory James, each playing with a plate in their lower leg. Third down and 10. Deep drop, Johnson has time, throws, caught on the run by Jerry Vicious, and he's finally taken down inside the 40 at the 37 by the linebacker, Travian Smith. Maybe the Raiders knew something when Chuck Bresnahan, the defense coordinator, said, this is the guy that I worry about. Again, here's Joe Jurevicius here, and, and you're going to see him come on across. See, he starts up, comes right across. The linebacker is waiting for him. He gets right across in front of his face, and right as he gets across there, Brad Johnson has that ball ready and gives it to him. That's when they, you know, and a crossing pattern, when you run across the field, you are always going to be open in some part of the field. 23-yard gain on a third and ten. Now a toss to Pittman, who came over from the Cardinals, who breaks one. And he's finally bumped out of bounds by Rod Woodson. Good block by Allstott. What else is new? Well, that was a very good block by Mike Allstott. And that's it. You have your lineman, and then you have your fullback. They always say that Allstott isn't a true fullback. But on this play, he's a true fullback. He's playing a fullback position. And watch his lead and block. Boom, right there. And Pittman is right in behind him and breaks right off that block. Watch how Mike Allstott, number 40, times this block. I mean, he has him there. And just, just as he gets here, he looks like he's going to go up. And then, boom, he goes down and cuts the lead. That's a 23-yard gain. So back-to-back 23-yard -back gains. Aaron Stecker is now in the backfield behind all stop the fake and Johnson 
blasted as he throws and it's incomplete. That's Napoleon Harris. We mentioned before a rookie picked in the first round out of Northwestern and he's done a great job starting this season. Yeah and that's that's the thing that has to bother John Gruden because every pass that he has the most important thing to him is pass protection. He wants to get he wants to get the thing protected. There it is from Skycam and you can see what Brad Johnson is in and you know why he had to get rid of that ball. Because Harris was coming right on him. Was a little delayed blitz. Stecker stays in. Second down and 10 from the 14 yard line. Stecker swinging to the outside, then turns it back, and he'll be ridden down by the outside linebacker, Eric Barton. That's a great shot when you get a linebacker and he makes a tough tackle like that right at the line of scrimmage and gets up and pulls a divot out of his head <laughs> and that's all football on real grass and and a beautiful day I mean you, you know you couldn't ask for anything better for the biggest game of the year and in a place like this on a day like this I know what I said the scariest thing all week was the commissioner saying there might not be another game here if they don't build a new stadium they should move it here permanently what's he thinking third down and nine from the 13 yard line the pass is swung out to Pittman but through his hands and incomplete. So they have a 23 yard gain on third and 10, then another 23, and then they bog down, and here comes Dramatica to try to tie the game. Well, that, was a, that was a good call on the defense by Blitz and Napoleon Harris, and that's the one that you know made Brad Johnson get rid of the ball when he didn't want to, and then he gets in long yardage. Even had he completed that pass, they still would have had to try the field goal here. 31 yard attempt, both teams with. Excellent kickers. Janikowski on one side, Martin Gramatica on the other. Tom Tupa to hold. Ryan Benjamin to snap it. From 31, that one is good. 7.51 left in the opening quarter. We're tied. 3-3 in San Diego. Throughout the day, we'll look at... The players who posed with the Lombardi Trophy. Romo trying for that fifth ring. Two as a Niner, two as a Bronco. And then he left Denver, found a home in Oakland, and here he is in the Super Bowl again. So 3 3 with Grammatica to send it down in the direction of Marcus Knight. And it's a bouncing ball fielded by Knight at the eight. And he's rolled out of bounds up near the 30-yard line. So the game is on. And Romo already in full throttle. 3-3. Three, three. On a spectacular Sunday. And the field almost encased in shadow now. Started out half and half. You can see where the line is as the Raiders start from the 30 yard line. And Gannon has protection over the middle, hits Garner. And he's tackled by Brooks. And John, what about the change at center? What's going to happen with, with True replacing Robinson? You know, Adam True's not a stiff. I mean, he's a guy that, you know, started 14 games at center for the Raiders last year. He's a good player. He's not as big or as strong as Robbins, but he's quicker. And you know, and he gets to his blocks and he gets to that second level. He gets to the linebacker real well. He's good on screen. So this isn't a big drop off between these two. Second down and four. They go split backs with Garner and Richie. Gannon stepping away from pressure, chased by Spires, and then the pass is caught, but out of bounds. Into the arms of Jerry Rice, but he's on the chalk, covered by Brian Kelly. It'll be third down. You know, and Adam True's been holding his own so far. I mean, I mean here, here he's going to get a double. I mean, you see him here, and then he's going to get some help here. And, and that's, that's the thing that he does. See how quick he is? I mean, boom, that ball goes, and he gets his hands right up there, and, and there's no way that, that that tackle is going to get off of him. So... So, you know, they lose Robbins, and it's a thing, but it's not like putting a guy in there that never played. In fact, we went to practice on Wednesday. Robbins didn't practice, so True took every snap. We went to practice yesterday. He also took every snap yesterday. Third down and four, and Gannon's going to go down again in the arms of Greg Spires. Second time. 
as you say, that's that's the speed of this Tampa Bay defense. You know, you think of speed and you're thinking of of, of defensive linebackers and you're thinking of defensive backs, but they have it here too. Watch Spires. He's going to overpower Kennedy right there, then turn on his speed. I mean, the, the speed comes from the time that he overpowers Kennedy and knocks him back until he gets to the quarterback. Shane Leckler, first punt of the game, and this is a beauty. Goes all the way to the 15, where it's fair caught just inbounds by Carl Williams. So Leckler able to pin Tampa with a beautiful angled 53-yard kick. 6:36 left in the period. All square at three. You know, John, both teams playing a bit of hurry up, but it's been an awkwardly paced first quarter. Yeah, because I don't feel that the offenses are are really up to a hurry up yet. I mean, you have to be ready to take that pace, and the defenses have some say about that. I mean, so far, both the defenses have been the dominant factors in this game. You know, the offense is trying to go up tempo, but really unable to establish it. So here we go again with Tampa Bay starting this drive. With six and a half to go in the period from its own 16 yard line. Keyshawn Johnson in motion. Pitman with the ball swinging to the outside and coming up to make the tackle is Charles Woodson. And we have John Lynch mic'd up. It's our man. It's our man. Joe Joe. Trying to cover him with linebackers ain't gonna happen. That was on Tampa last drive when Jurevicius caught the pass on third down for 23 yards. And this one is tipped and incomplete with a lot of white shirts in the neighborhood off the fingertips of Mike Allstott. You know, and, and we're, we're talking about that fast pace, that hurry up, and it works as long as you continue to get first downs. But if you go fast pace and you're just three and out, then what you're doing is you're not giving your defense any time to rest at all. You're just getting them right back in there. Third down and nine now. We've played nine minutes. We've already had 22 plays in the game, but it's it's like we're in mud here right now. Well, the fences look a little more in mud, especially the offensive lines and the and the defensive lines look like they're not in mud. Third down and nine, and Johnson just throws it into the ground, which you can do if you're out of the pocket, and it's fourth down. So that's a three and out. <laughs> Yeah, and that's so the fast-paced thing doesn't work if you don't get first downs. All you do is, is not even give your defense a chance to get a, a good drink before they have to get back in there. Now Tom to a punt. And I think that hurts both these defenses, but more the Tampa Bay defense because they're an undersized, quick defense that can be worn down. Darian Gordon, who was picked up toward the end of the season to run back kicks. Will be the recipient here and Gordon with room to roam from the 43 yard line. But the Bucks get to him at midfield and take down at about the 50. Jack Golden, the first to hit him. 546 left in the opening period. Raiders three, Bucks three. Look at the play selection thus far. The Raiders pass dominant, as was the case last week, and so have been the Bucks to this point. Ten out of their 14. Mark Trestman is the offensive coordinator. He is on the mic into Rich Gannon's helmet. He stands very close to, oftentimes next to, the head coach Bill Callahan. They decide whether it's run or pass. It's almost always pass these days. And then Gannon gets the call. First and ten now from the 49. Zach Crockett is in the game. He's a short yardage back normally. And they give it to him. And he takes it to the 45 yard line. We have Jerry Rice mic'd up moments ago on the bench. We got we gotta get some uh, points on the board. That's yeah. what we did. I see what you're them, dog. I wanna see what they inside like. You see what them guts are like. They can rush the pass but but can they stop the run? John, that's Jerry Porter, two wide receivers talking about running the ball. What is that? I, I know, and, and and they're trying to run now. They got big Langston Walker in as a tight end, an extra blocker, and they just run towards him. And now it's Crockett, so they run their short yardage back twice in a row from midfield. 
He takes it to the 43 yard line, third down and four. Bill Callahan was talking about Langston Walker when they put him in, and he says he increases their edge. Well, heck, he weighs 360 pounds. When you have a guy that big, that has to make you have a wide edge over there. Of course, they start at Langston and they cut it back in, but getting their power runners and their power blockers in and trying to go to that some of that stuff Jerry Porter was just talking about. Now Walker comes out in the backfield now Garner comes in on third down and four he's off setback of Gannon. Four man rush and pressure on Gannon and it's knocked away. It's knocked away by Spires who already had actually have two sacks and a knockdown Gannon looking to get it to Jerry Porter. And the big play was made by Ellis Wims. You know some of these times these tackles look like the same guy. I mean you don't it looks like Warren Sapp the way he plays it. He gets a penetration and he's the guy you're going to see him come right up the middle number 96 with the penetration and he's the guy that's going to make Gannon bring the ball down. You see it right there. You see and then he had to bring the ball down and then get it out to the side and it just went right off his fingertips. Now Lechner whose first punt was a beauty from deep in his own territory this one more of a pooch kick that's fair caught by Carl Williams at the 16 yard line with 413 remaining. So the storyline being played out you know it's so funny we were talking Brian Billick was talking about it on the the pregame show where you know one coach says you know I know this guy but he thinks I'm going to do that and that guy thinks I'm going to do this and all that and you have paralysis by analysis. Well you know the interesting thing about the start of this game is both these teams script their first 15 so what we've seen offensively uh, has been scripted and obviously it doesn't work. I mean I think that that the offenses look a little conservative a little sluggish and to me the, the defenses look a lot better and a lot quicker. If this was a strip, this was a pilot that never saw air, I'll tell you that. So they have to start ad living here pretty soon from the 16 yard line. On first down, this is Michael Pittman for a gain of five to the 21 yard line, tackled there by Chris Cooper. You know, I think they both came out with that idea of, of the fast pace and wanting to throw the ball a lot and do all those things. And then they found out that it's hard to handle the pass rush that way. And, and you have to get those pass rushers calmed down before you go to some of those things. Here's John Gruden's first 15. You can see he passed 10 times, ran five times, scored three points. Now, now John Gruden likes balance. It's a lot more in, uh, important to him than it is to the other side and Bill Callahan. Two of those plays really work, the 223 yarders. Now it's Johnson making his first catch on a slant tackle by Woodson. This is, this is going to be a, a, a very good matchup. Keyshawn Johnson is always going to go to the inside, and he said, you know, he said, I watch these corners, and they always have their backs to the outside. He said, I'm never going to run to the outside anyway. He said, they're just set up for things that I like to do, which is to run those inside moves, the in, the slant, and the cross. From the 32, Aaron Stecker in the backfield. Jerry Vicious comes in motion. Raiders with a blitz pressure on Johnson but he slings it away and it's almost picked off by Rod Woodson. We talked about Rod playing in a Super Bowl again. He was there with Pittsburgh. He was there two years ago with Baltimore had the season turning play the 98 yard interception run back and those who should have had this one. Yeah, it's funny. I don't think that, that, that Brad Johnson thought there was any way that Rod Woodson is going to get to that ball. You see Rod Woodson is a deep guy and Brad Johnson kind of lobbed it in there a little too much and, and 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 Rod Woodson is perfect at reading quarterbacks eyes. He's been doing it all his life and he does that as well or better than anyone. So Johnson's already thrown a pick under pressure two near picks after throwing just one in his last six regular season starts and we have a penalty. First one of the game is Michael Pittman. Takes it up to the 35. But Brad Johnson, as Bill Carolla will make the call here in a moment, Brad was hurt, missed the last two games of the regular season. And it's an illegal shift or formation for Tampa Bay. And then, you know, Brad was out. There was uh, some speculation that it was a vertebrae problem. We know it was a back problem. And then came back for the playoffs and looked, you know, pretty good the last two weeks, obviously. Yeah, and when he was out, they looked terrible. Oof. Remember, they had Sean King in there and they had Rob Johnson in there, and they, they, they couldn't even get the ball back to the line of scrimmage. Illegal Pittsburgh. shift, two men moving, not setting. Number 79 was going down, while the motion man was in, continued in motion. Five yard penalty, 
Replace it, second down. And there is the backup to Brad Johnson. That's Rob Johnson. We saw him that night, the Monday night game in Tampa, when he took them on a long drive late in the game, and then they coughed the ball up, and the ex-Buffalo Bill and Jacksonville Jaguar. And the number three guy, of course, is Sean King, who was the starter in the NFC Championship game in 99 and came within five points of taking his team to the Super Bowl. And he was also the starter that night that we did the game against Pittsburgh. <laughs> Last that long, and this pass is dropped by Keyshawn Johnson. Pressure put on by Roderick Coleman. As you can see in the last six games that Brad played, how hot he was. I mean, you add him up, it's 11. That's 15 touchdowns, only one pick. And then that, that bottom game against Detroit, they have the win. It's toward the end of the game. He gets fallen upon by one of the Lions, and that created the back problem. Yeah, and then, and then he was inactive, and... And, and they got a break when they didn't have to play that first week when they got the first week by and then in fact Brad Johnson said that was really big for him third and 15 they're still sending thank you notes to the Jets who knocked off the Packers to give him that bye. and that's Eric Barton coming up to take care of Pittman and they're forced to punt you know this this is a a, a tough thing for this offense when you when you can't pass because you can't get the pass protection or guys drop balls and you can't run you know, because the the Raiders in the running game are really getting penetration against this buck offensive line and there was Gruden who is totally exorcised and frustrated with the offense to this point barking as the offense came off Tom two for the punt Darian Gordon to run it back by floating kick Gordon from the 33 and the former San Diego Charger will turn the corner and bring it back to the 49 yard line and that's where Oakland will start just shy of midfield. This is the thing what you try and do on a punt return is form a wall you see Darian Gordon has a ball on the right now the, the the Raiders form a wall on the on the right side and he just comes right across there. Now of course four four of the Buccaneers get to the outside but watch a wall form here. There's a wall. There's a wall. There's a wall. Now that's the end of the wall. So the next thing you're going to see are the orange jerseys. That was a good return and I'll tell you one thing this this Tampa Bay Buccaneer defense or or special teams or all these players <laughs> are as good at tacklers are there on football. They have no guests from the 49 yard line four man rush. Garner on the screen and Garner to the 44. Now we talked to Monty Kiffin, the Tampa Bay defensive coordinator, and he was telling us the other day, and I've been listening to a lot of the shows. I think he told everybody, he said, this is the guy we have to stop. Well, it was it was funny. Monty Kiffin says they they beat the Philadelphia Eagles last Sunday. They get on the airplane. Old Monty Kiffin is sitting right behind John Gruden. The first thing, the airplane takes off, seatbelt sign hasn't even got off yet. He sees Gruden head come over the top, and he said, you have to stop number 25. <laughs> Gruden would know. And they're going to stop him here. Short of the first down, setting up third and short for Oakland as the period winds down. Here's Garner and kind of lost in the shuffle because you know about Gannon with Rice and Brown and guys like that a lot of publicity but that's 900 yards rushing and 900 yards receiving and when you get up in that neighborhood remember a thousand a thousand has only been done by Roger Craig and Marshall Falk. Well and, and he's a speed for that team too if you don't put Jerry Porter in there as a third wide receiver other than Charlie Garner this Raider offense has no speed. Third and a deuce. Gannon flushed out, chased by Spires, and it's intercepted by Dexter Jackson. So each team with a pick, Jackson brings it back to the 50 with nine seconds left in the quarter. Mark Tressman, the offensive coordinator of the Raiders, called it cluing. In other words, watching the quarterback's eyes, no one clues better than the zone defense of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is the, the, the two things that they did well. Is one, the rush flush, and then the other thing is they clue and they just wait and they're and they're always in position that whatever happens the ball is in front of them it gets tipped they're going to be like Des Dexter Jackson right in position to get it but see what the line does first that's what really caused it the flush they flushed him out and made him throw that 
and see who does the flush and Simeon Wright. What a move he makes on Barry Sims. That's a spinner to the inside. On first down, they give the ball to Pittman. He gets across the 50, and that will be the end of the first 15 minutes of this scrum. And that's what it's like, a little bit of a rugby scrum, all defense to this point. 3-3. End of one, and our coverage from San Diego continues after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Back in San Diego, Al Michaels, John Madden, Melissa Stark, Lynn Swan working the sidelines. Second quarter of Super Bowl 37, ready to begin. 3 3. Tampa Bay now with John Gruden watching his offense out there for the fifth time. They've had a pick, a field goal, two punts, and uh, this possession after their interception. And again, the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers offensively, they're not a good running team. And so they have to pass, and they have to, Brad Johnson has to pass quickly because he's not, he's not a, he doesn't run. And he's off the mark again, and he throws it behind Keyshawn Johnson. He's been way off the mark, under pressure again, and down he goes. And I think the key is he's under pressure all the time. The fact that he doesn't run, he's kind of a sitting duck back there, and they know they know a, a point to rush to, and they're going to get to that point. And the Raider defensive line is doing a better job than the Buccaneer offensive line of keeping him off Brad Johnson. That's why Brad Johnson's only completed four passes. He's four out of 14. One pick. Three other balls have been dropped. Third down and nine. Flag because the Raiders look like they jumped past caught 39. Keyshawn Johnson for the moment pending the penalty first down. And that has to be against Reagan Upshaw because as you said he did he did get the jumper. He got off right on that ball. It's against Robin Oban there and I'm sure it is against Upshaw. You know, part of it is these, these defensive ends want to get off in the ball, and sometimes, sometimes they start to anticipate the count. And that time, he just, he was just a half a beat early. Offside, 91, defense. That penalty is declined. He's out of the play. First down. You know, you know, here's Reagan Upshaw here, and as a defensive end, you always want to be quick. You always want to be the first one to get off, and then sometimes it's just too early. That is John Ritchie, who, who's always bleeding every game. I mean, he's he has cuts along his eyebrow, forehead. Corolla's going to stop playing for just a second. You know what they call those things? They call them calcium deposits. I always thought they were just kind of like, you know, you get a cut, then you get a scab, then the scab breaks off. But they say on his head, he has two calcium deposits. You see him? Right and left. Frontal. We need a dermatologist on the bench. Yeah, I mean, he's usually, this is the second quarter now, he's usually bleeding after about two minutes of the first quarter. Keyshawn, an unhappy pup, at least for the moment, the way the offense is going, and he's out, at least for this play, as Earl Scott takes the ball to the 37 yard line. Watch John Ritchie. Now that's, uh, excuse me, that's Keyshawn right there. And that's why he came out for one play. Rod Woodson with an elbow to the helmet. That's why Keyshawn was on the bench, and now he is back in. Three receivers bunched to the left, including Allstock here. Johnson stepping up, throws caught by Keyshawn. Johnson to Johnson, first down inside the 30. That'll move the chains to about the 26-yard line. That was interesting. What they did is they had their triple or bunch over on this side, and then we're watching them the other day. You see, here's what bunch is. They have three guys right here together, and then as the ball snap, they all just disperse, and it's really, it's really tough. If you're man-to-man, -man, you're going to get picked. Here's Keyshawn Johnson. He was the inside guy. If you're zoned, they're going to push and find one guy to get in a hole. That time it was Keyshawn Johnson got in that hole, and then he just got between himself where, where he, he just gave Brad Johnson his numbers. Keyshawn, three grabs, out again now. 
Each of those receptions has been good for a first down. Carl Williams replaces him, and Olstad turns his shoulders, gets inside, takes it to the 22, tackled there by Roderick Coleman. Yeah, this is the thing that John Gruden has done now. He's gone to two tight ends and two running backs and just one ride receiver. And again, it seems like when you get on this side of the 50 for the Bucks, that that John, that, that, that Mike Allstott is a big runner here. I mean, th this is where he does the best. I mean, he's a downhill runner. He's powerful. And when you're in the middle of the field or on the other side, he's not as big. When you get inside the 50 and start getting close to the goal line, Mike Allstott can, can become real big. And here they go big again with both Allstott and Barnes. But Bill Romanowski is right there to say enough already. Yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> that's probably exactly what Romo was saying, that enough of this. I mean, you know, I, I pride myself in, in being a run stopper, and that's why I'm in here. And you guys have had your way in a couple of plays too much. Here he is. You're going to see Bill Romanowski is right here up in the end of the line of scrimmage. They run to the inside. He starts outside and then just flattens right down the line of scrimmage. In fact, he flattened a whole lot on that. He flattened Darian Barnes, the lead blocker. Third down and eight now from the 25. Game tied early second quarter. Keyshawn back in there. Brad Johnson going to the end zone and not even close with Johnson being double teamed on the way down. And now you're looking at a field goal of about 45 yards. You know, and that's one of the things about Brad Johnson. He makes good decisions. And as you said, there was a double team there. Keyshawn Johnson was double teamed. There was no way he was going to complete that pass, so he just threw it away. Tom Tupa will spot the ball actually just outside the 33. So this is a 43-yard attempt by Gramatica to try to give Tampa Bay its first lead of the Super Bowl. And from 43... Kick kind of a screwball started out as if it would hook, faded enough, winds up right down the middle. Buck six, Raiders three. And with the field now fully encased in shadow. At about 20 past four, Gramatica. Who just kicked his second field goal sends another bouncing ball to the 11-yard line. Marcus Knight to run it back through the middle, and he's taken down by Dexter Jackson at the 35, and that's where Gannon and company will go to work again. Six to three, Tampa Bay in Super Bowl 37. A lot of you guys will be going over, but not all of us will be going over. Can't get that boat over there in six days. From the 34-yard line, Gannon begins this drive, throwing over the middle, and Jerry Porter, who might play a very big role before this day is done, for a nine-yard grab. You know, I think the interesting thing here is this game is set up as the number one offense against the number one defense, and you know, is number one defense better than number one offense? And so far, Tampa Bay looks like the number one defense. The Raiders don't look like the number one offense. Not yet, and this is Charlie Garnett picking up the first down. So they go no huddle again at that point, a little up-tempo, and that's only their second first down of the game. Yeah, which isn't a bad time to go no huddle because you can get the first down. Now you get a new set of downs, and at least you're not going three and out. From the 45 now. and he gets picked up and it's intercepted again by Dexter Jackson and he's across the 50 to the 45 yard line Dexter Jackson well right now he is the leader in the clubhouse for the MVP award you know it's an interesting thing they're in nickel and they're going to bring Rondé Barber down here so you see the safety just sitting deep there. And he was just reading. You're talking about cluing, and you're talking about watching eyes. Dexter Jackson for the MVP award. You know, it's an interesting thing. They're in nickel, and they're going to bring Rondé Barber down here. So you see the safety just sitting deep there. And he was just reading. You're talking about cluing, and you're talking about watching eyes. Dexter Jackson is just sitting back there and watching Rich Gannon's eyes. 
Jackson. You know, they had, they, excuse me, I, I, mean, I was just saying they had the nickel defense in there. Rondé Barber blitz, so he, he thought that he wasn't going to have a free safety in there, and boom, there was Dexter Jackson sitting in there. And Dexter had three during the regular season, two already in the first 20 minutes of the game. Johnson starts to stumble, falling backwards, and the pass is incomplete. Well, John, you know, you look at that Tampa Bay defense, and this is part of the reason they were clearly number one overall and number one against the pass. Well, you know, here's here's Rondy Barber. We talked about that. He's the fifth defensive back. They get the whole thing picked up, and I think when Gannon sees Rondy Barber coming, he thinks corner blitz, so he thinks man-to-man. -man. He throws that post in there and doesn't see Dexter Jackson. Second and ten now from the 45-yard line. Pittman slipping out of the backfield taking it to the 40 yard line under 10 minutes to play now you know, we were talking to uh, to Brad Johnson the other day and I, I love his description of course the offensive guys love that Gruden came in and you know Tony Dungy they liked him but he was a defensive guy and it was Johnson who told us the other day about John Gruden he said you'd love to be in a disco with Gruden as the DJ Oh yeah, he's, he's he's a motivator. I mean, you know, you you watch him in practice. In fact, the other day when he was trying to simulate the Raiders' offense, he ran the quarterback position for the scout team, like a fantasy camp for him. Third and five, and the pass is incomplete, and Keyshawn's going to look for a flag and not get one. Covered by Charles Woodson, and he can't believe that he didn't get a flag there. Doesn't bother Charles Woodson. Charles Woodson is an amazing guy. He has a broken fibula. He's playing with a plate in his right leg. He played last week, didn't play very well. And if I can see, he doesn't really have his movement or his quickness. And and to be honest, I think the Raiders are just trying to get by with him out there corner because Charles Woodson with a plate in his leg isn't really Charles Woodson. Good non-call. Now Tim Brown will go back to accept this punt. I think they feel a little better with Tim Brown fair catching a ball in this situation than with Gordon. And he fair catches it at the 11 yard line. Always good to have a sure handed receiver in a situation where there's a push punt and very little chance of a run back. Or a 15 year veteran. Yes. On his way to the Hall of Fame. 6 3 bucks. Super Bowl 37. Three field goals, two by Grammatica, one by Janikowski. And now the Oakland Raiders begin this drive from their own 11 yard line. Gannon, five out of 10, two picks, two sacks. Empties the backfield, throws in a hurry, and it's off the hands of Brown. Again, the blitz that time by Ron B. Barber up the middle. You know, and I think I think the key is throws in a hurry, and that's that's what this Tampa Bay defense does to you is they they can they can pressure you with a blitz or with not, but their front four is is, is so fast that you can see over here. You see that they have the, the, the unbalanced there. They have four against two, so they're going to get a, a free rusher. That free rusher is Lonnie Barber, and he gets in that position when they go nickel. Second and ten, a little pump fake, and then he has to cover up, and down he goes. That's Simeon Rice, who had an earlier sack. And for Tampa Bay and Monty Kiffin, the defensive coordinator, I mean, they've just been quarterback killers this year. When you take a look, at what they have done, I mean, one of the interesting things here, the regular season, look at that bottom number, the pass rating. That's 48.4. So all of the opposition quarterbacks have a pass rating of 48.4. If you're a QB with that rating, and there it is in postseason, you have 48.4, you're on the waiver wire normally. Right, but that's, that's what this defense will do to you. Third down and 11. Gannon slings it incomplete over the middle. That one intended for Jerry Porter. Three and out again. <laughs> There's a Warren Sapp running down there. He's being a cheerleader now. Yep. Mm -hmm. We're putting pressure on this. I'll show you what a number one offense is. How about us? We're the yep. number one defense. And in the Super Bowl, you have a neutral crowd. It's half and half. A lot of you know corporate people, obviously, and all that. It's not a regular season crowd, so it's a little quieter than it would normally be. And Warren trying to, to stir the masses, at least on this side of the field. Lechler to punt out of the end zone. Fielded 47 by Carl Williams. 
into Oakland territory and inside the 30 to the 27 yard line. So the flow, the complete flow right now with the Buccaneers. Right, and it all started with that Des Dexter Jackson interception. Then they went three and out. They didn't get anything, maybe offensively, but they did get some field position. They got to punt the Raiders, back them up. Then they stopped them. Then the Raiders had a punt. So this field position is kind of a result of that Dexter Jackson interception. Going back to it, sure. Callahan frustrated, obviously, offensively and defensively. They have to, to make a stand here, limit them to no more than three from the 27-yard line. This is Pittman. Pittman. Good hole, exploits the right side, tackled by Dorsett, but not until he gets to the 21 for a gain of six. Yeah, and this is a thing that, you know, we talked about the Raiders, I really felt offensively, they'd be satisfied just to pass the ball every down, and they're not having success doing that. Now, the Buccaneers and John Gruden, John Gruden wants balance, and sometimes he'll pass earlier, and then when he gets a lead, I'll guarantee you, he's going to run. The other time that he's going to run is when he gets down in this area of the field. Second and four. Gives it to Pittman. Inside the 10, it'll be first down and goal. That's what they do. You know, we talk about those that, that position, and we talk about... You know, you're getting that defense three and out. You can see that they're starting to wear a little now. Watch them, Sam Adams. Here's a block they're going to get. They get a good double team, get him pushed, get him turned out, and Mike Pittman runs right off of that double team. And he sets up a situation where Warren Sapp now comes in offensively to provide leverage on the left side. There he is in a four-point stance on first and goal. They go the other way with Olstott. And he takes it to just outside the one. You know, and usually they run to Warren Sapp's side. In fact, uh, John Gruden was saying, you know, they, I mean, this isn't a gimmick thing when we put Sapp in there. He said he's he's as good a blocking tight end as there is in, as there is in football. We're watching him practice the other day. They do have a pass to him. And he said the big thing he has to do is fake him on the line of scrimmage because he's not going to beat him if he gets open. Would you dare do it here? I would if, if, if you're going to do it this is the down to do it second and goal instead it's all start into the end zone for the game's first touchdown that's what John Gruden says you can see him going up and down with his left hand he calls that pounding the rock he says we got to get down there we have to pound the rock again they go right at Sam Adams watch number 60 we're going to see Cozy Coleman make this block right here this is a big one you got to control the line of scrimmage control the big guy at the line of scrimmage to get a little movement so that all start can get back in there and push it in Gramatica for the conversion And with 6.24 remaining now in the half, Tampa Bay on top by 10. Well, his team is up 13-3 as Gramatica sends a one-hopper to the eight-yard line. Marcus Knight. It spilled at the 29-yard line, knifing in, flying in was Corey Ivey for the tackle. I'll tell you one thing: this Tampa Bay Buccaneer have brought their tacklers today. <laughs> I mean, there, you know, we talk about tacklers on defense and no guests, and but but special teams are the same way. I mean, they're open field tackling, and I think they've always been good tacklers. I mean, they're 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 one of those groups that I don't think they keep players that don't tackle. I know they don't keep defensive players that can't tackle. They don't have any of those things that they call cover corners. A cover corner cannot play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And they've done a great job tackling and covering against the Raiders who can't get on track. And that is incomplete. Drop by Garner. This is the seventh Oakland possession. They have gained 39 yards in six possessions. Yeah, and I think, Al, it all starts with the front four of the Buccaneers. I mean, they're getting pressure. I mean, every every time Gannon gets back there, 
he doesn't have time to set. You know, I mean, he always has to move and move as he throws and throws when he doesn't want to. And and the Raider offense or pass offense is a rhythm offense. And this front four of the Buccaneers is keeping him out of any rhythm. Second down and ten from the 29, and there they are. Garner. And he's taken down by Quarles and John. They're also doing it without Booger McFarland, who got hurt. He would make that front four even more potent. Yeah, and then Chartrick Darby, who is playing in there, is, is kind of injured himself, and and they kind of rotate in there. You know, Ellis Wims has been in there quite a few times, and he's come up with big plays. Greg Spires, the left end, has had more big plays in his first half than, 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 than I remember ever seeing him have. There's McFarland. The Raiders have had five straight three and outs. Now they try to convert on third and six here. And they do. And Porter makes the catch. He gets positioned inside Dwight Smith and moves the chains. That was great by Rich Gannon there because he was getting the blitz on that side. You know, that's it's easier to throw away from the side of the blitz. The blitz was coming from his left, and he threw that ball to Porter to the left. Watch this. Here comes the blitz on this side, and he's going to throw to that side. After they pick up their first first down since the beginning of the game it is Garner stopped behind the line of scrimmage now only one team in the history of the Super Bowl has ever overcome a deficit of 10 points to win the game and it was right here it was in 1988 after the 87 season Washington against Denver the Broncos unbelievably led 10 to nothing and the final score was 42 to 10 Redskins they had 35 points in the second quarter Second and 11, and Gannon sidearms it to Garner, and Garner is out to the 47 yard line, so it's third and about seven upcoming. You know, and you assume that the Raiders should be able to come back because they aren't one of those, you know, ball control, run the clock out, play defense type of team. They're they're the number one offense in football, and in this first half, they certainly haven't shown that. Gannon, seven of 15. But at some point, I mean, you have Tim Brown and you have Jerry Rice and you have Jerry Porter. I mean, you have to get the ball to these guys. 16.7 rating. Third down and six. Gannon throws, and that's dropped. Tim Brown incomplete. Dwight Smith covering a little behind Brown, but clearly a catchable ball. I mean, Tim Brown's been playing for 15 years, and he's caught so many passes in his career that... That's one that he usually catches. But I think, you know, we're talking about rhythm and the offensive team of the Raiders being a rhythm team. This Tampa Bay defense has really kicked them or knocked them out of rhythm. That Tampa Bay defense can make the opposition offense look lethargic. And that's exactly what they've done. Leckler's punt is fair caught on the run by Carl Williams at the 23 yard line. So the Bucks have it back again with 345 remaining in the hand. You know, in his Tampa Bay defense, to me it all starts with the front four. And and making things like this happen where you where you flush the quarterback. You see the, the rhythm and, and, and you see Gannon not giving him a chance to get set, not giving him to throw when he wants to throw. And they've just kept him off balance this whole first half. Now some of it is blitzing, some of it is good coverage, some of it is linebackers, but it all starts with that front four. And Monty Kiffin, who was inherited by Gruden, remember Monty was there with Tony Dungy for all of those years. He was in place when Gruden got the job. Pittman. And when you look at Gruden, and everybody knows the story, Parcells was going to take the job. Then they looked at Gruden, but the Raider price was too high at that point. Then they went to guys like Nick Saban and Ralph Friedgen in college, and Mariucci had a chance. Then they went back to Gruden finally at the end and made the deal. I'm thinking, you know, John, if Gruden doesn't get the job, what do they do? Fill it on monster.com? Well, that's that's going to be a problem. I mean, the Glazer family would be completely embarrassed. That's why they had to pay the eight million, the two first, the two second. They had to get John Gruden. Second down and five. From the 28, Raiders nearly jumped. And there is a flag. In fact, they did jump. 
You know, it would be interesting if the if the Buccaneers were to win this Super Bowl, how many owners in football would give eight million dollars and two first and two seconds this year to win next year's Super Bowl? A few more than would have a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> that would be an interesting vote, but I would I would bet at least 30 of them. Would. Right, now, in, in the glasses lower first row there, there he is. Thank you, John. That's. Malcolm Glazer, the president, and behind him his sons. He has, he has uh, sons and daughters who are all very involved in the team, running the team. And, and there is the, the price, a first and a second in this past draft, first round pick in the next draft, and then a second round pick in 2004, eight million bucks. And then, of course, you have to pay Gruden. Yeah, but if he wins the Super Bowl, it's worth it. That's, they, they brought him in to get over that hump. And if he can get him over that hump, he's worth it. And there's Al Davis. The recipient of the eight million bucks and all of those picks. Blitz picked up and that opens up a big hole through the middle for Pittman. It's almost as if the Bucks know exactly what the Raiders are going to do. Well, now they do because they have him on the ropes and they know that. And I'll tell you this about John Gruden. If he has a lead, he's going to sit on. When he gets ahead, he's going to run the ball. They had trouble with their pass protection, so he started to run the ball again. Another good lead block by Mike Allstop. Boom, right there. And, you know, and, and Pittman is showing his speed and quickness now. Second down and one. Eric Barton out of the game at linebacker Travy and Smith in right now as they work on Barton's foot. And Allstop catches the pass in the flat. And then gets angled down by Dorsett and finally Romanowski up near midfield. And that's going to take us to the two minute warning. So the Bucks are on the move again as we come to the two minute warning in Super Bowl 37 with Tampa Bay leading Oakland 13 to 3 in San Diego. Twilight now in San Diego on a day in which it was 81 degrees at the start. <laughs> Easy for you to say. <laughs> Hold up that sign. Aaron Stecker in the game at running back, 43 yard line, and you've got Upshaw coming across the line again. Stecker in the ball game here. Flag on the lead. You know, that's one of the things that has haunted the Raiders all year are just penalties. You know, that. That, you know they, they they have to get something going now. They, you know the Buccaneers have the momentum, and they have to take the momentum away from them. And the last thing they need offside. is a stupid jump offside. Defense, five-yard penalty, replay first down. I think I'd tell Reagan up so that's about enough of that. Mm -hmm. We don't need any more of these. You know it's tough enough stopping these guys now, and they run. But you see what they did. John Gruden and the Buccaneers, they start to run six plays in a row, six running plays in a row. Then they get you playing the run hard, and then they go play pass. And, and that's what Brad Johnson likes to do, and that's what John Gruden likes to do. From the 37 on first and five after the flag, and Brad Johnson throws, and that's incomplete, a little high for Ricky Dudley, the ex Raider, who couldn't haul it in over the middle. The greatest running performance in Super Bowl history was here in January of 88 Timmy Smith and here is as you can see Clarence Davis uh, one of John's Raiders Tom Matty had a 76 yard first half in the classic third Super Bowl and there's Pittman who has kind of had you know, he's had a decent year the numbers aren't electrifying came over from Arizona as a free agent when they left Warwick Dunn signed with Atlanta. And here's Pittman adding to that yardage and the flag comes in at the end of the play. You know, Pittman's one of those guys if you're not ready for he can knock you out. You know I, mean, I think that you have to you can't ignore you know when you're playing Tampa Bay you just can't say Allstott Keyshawn Johnson McCardell and so on. You better say Pittman now, if you're ready for him. I think you can handle it. But if you're not ready for him and it doesn't look like the Raiders are ready for him and it looks like they have other thoughts of things that they have to stop and you know Michael Pittman isn't the top of that list. Illegal use of the hands hands to the face number 99 defense five yard penalty from the end of the run automatic first down. The Lawrence Grant John you were talking about it. They got away last week with all of those penalties and they had, they had nine in the first half against Tennessee but 
Not yeah. down by 10. You know, I mean, when you talk about championships and the way championships are won, and whether it's defense or offense, you can't do stupid things. I mean, you can't have penalties. You, I mean, you know, if you're a lot better than an opponent, you can have penalties and overcome. If you're not, then they're going to kill you. So Jerry Rice, Jerry's been shut out through the first 28 minutes of the game. From the 29 now, they give it to Allston, and he can't get out of the backfield because Eric Barton, who has his foot worked on before, is back in and upends him. You know, and you say Jerry Rice has been shut out. I think that that a lot of that is, you know, I'm just watching Tampa Bay Buccaneer coverage. They're not doing anything special. You know, they're just playing zone, keeping everything in front of them. There's no, you know, special tight coverage or anything that they're doing to Jerry Rice. I think it's all about the pass protection and Rich Gannon and not letting him get in rhythm. Second down and 11 from the 30 yard line. Johnson throws and that's Keyshawn making a sliding grab as he went down on the grass and was able to haul it in a little short of the first down the spot of the 20. You know wide receivers love quarterbacks when they put the ball there. I mean it looks like it's a little behind but what he does he brings him to the ground so he's not going to take that big hit. He lets him go down. He doesn't run him right into the safety. See, see, Rod Woodson, number 26, is going to be there. He doesn't run him into Rod Woodson. He puts him to the ground. Timeout, Bucks. Forty-six seconds remaining in the half, and a, I think, a very big play here, John, for the. Oakland Raider defense because if they let them convert here and they go in for a touchdown big difference obviously between 20 to 3 and 16 to 3. Well you know that Oakland Raider offense not getting first down those three and that have, have killed this Raider defense and you can just see that they're starting to get worn down they're tired and, and it's that type of thing because they've been out there in the field too long because their offense hasn't been able to do anything. This will be Tampa's 42nd play of the half. That's a big number and a half. Third and one from the 20 yard line. And it's all stops. With Warren Sapp, he was telling us the other day, he said, you know, the first guy I'm going to go to see if we win this thing, Tony Dungy. Yeah, and he lives two doors down from Tony Dungy. So after they get back to Tampa, if they win, he doesn't have to go very far to see <laughs> Tony Dungy. Respect and you know you look at Dungy and clearly when Tony came in that helped resurrect a laughing stock team and then you know, Tony could only just take them so far and that's why he got fired and and John Gruden takes him over the top. Tampa Bay doesn't really have to go to the end zone here because they still have one timeout left. Johnson slings it to the outside. Allstock slips a tackle and picks up the first down as he breaks out of Charles Woodson's grasp to the five. You know what they do. Brad Johnson was saying the way that they key this if if they see Romanowski playing on the slot. In other words if they see this when the slot if they see Romanowski out here they know that it's zone. So that's his pre snap read that anytime Romanowski is out on the slot he's going to have zone. If they have a corner out on him it's going to be man. If Rod Woodson is out watch for dog. First and goal 34 ticks and one timeout left for the Bucks. And Johnson to the outside, caught by McCardell, spins away from the coverage. Charles Woodson, the defender, touchdown. Brad Johnson was perfect there. That's the thing. You have tight coverage. This is one of the things they work on, putting it on their back shoulder. Brad Johnson put it on Keenan McCardell's back shoulder, and Rod, Rod Woodson, I mean, uh, Woodson was on, Charles Woodson was on his front shoulder. 30 seconds now. Remaining in the half as Gramatica tries to tack it on. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have now outgained Oakland 198 yards to 58. Three defensive penalties on that drive for the Raiders. You see, when you get the tight coverage here, McCardell's going to run up, and if he doesn't get by him, he throws it to the back shoulder. That's exactly what he did there. You see, now Woodson is playing the front shoulder. He's playing the front of him, and Brad Johnson just throws it to the backside of McCardell. 
Now after you catch one of those and you know that you got a guy where you want him, you try and go for your dunk. I think that dunk was a little short. <laughs> and there's Allstott and there's Gruden. <laughs> Sat, Keyshawn, Lynch. And this is just the end of the first half. Yeah. These, are, these are end of game type celebrations. And it's going to be a long extended as it always is at the Super Bowl halftime. And the Raiders will have to go in there and stew even longer than the normal 12 minutes. Well they better do more than stew or they, <laughs> if they're going to stew they better stew up some more offense because they have to get plays they have to start making first downs, and they have to keep their defense off the field. Dramatica to kick off for the Buccaneers and Marcus Knight is back. And he's been kicking the bouncers all day. Drop Knight picks it back up at the nine taken down to the 12 and again just spectacular coverage by their special teams unit. Interestingly, Gruden was telling us throughout the season, I'm worried about kickoff return coverage. Not today. Let's go to John Lynch mic'd up. Mike, every play they run, we ran in practice. I know. It's, on, it's on, unreal. Oh. Yeah. Well, that's what happens when your coach was their coach. Right, and that gives you a <laughs> heck of a lot of confidence when you know that there's nothing that's keeping you off balance that you, know, you feel so good about your defensive plan against their offensive plan. First and two 13 Gannon looking for something again he gets hit by Sapp. They had a vice on him that time and that's incomplete. And again we talk about how it all starts as a great defense you know cover two zone all those things but it all starts right here. With this, with this front four and being able to get pressure on the quarterback. And they've been all over Gannon in this first half. I mean, this has been relentless pressure by this Tampa Bay defense. All year long, the, the Raider critics would say this team is too old, and, and they showed they weren't too old, but this Tampa Bay defense can make you look old. I'll tell you, in every game that I saw, the, the Raider offensive line has been a heck of a pass-protecting offensive line, but they aren't in this first half. And now, John, things have gone so much in Tampa Bay's favor to this point, they are going to take a timeout, hoping to get the ball back once more before the end of the half. I mean, Gruden is going to go for the kill shot. Yeah, I would, too. I mean, you know, they, they have that rule that if you can stop them here, and then you can fair catch. You get a free kick after a fair catch. So I'm sure that's what John Gruden is thinking. We can stop him here. If we can get a fair catch, then we can get a free kick. But Tampa Bay, it's only third down, though, and, and Tampa Bay cannot stop the clock. So the Raiders can run a play and then let the clock run out. But and, you can tell it's almost as if Gruden is saying, you know what? I've got my knee on your neck, and now I'm going to really press it down. Yeah, and he's, he's going to make them either run out the clock or third and long here. You know, if, if they want to pass the ball, you know, show show what they're thinking, what they're going mm -hmm. to do. And, you know, you know and say, OK, uh, you, know, you know, you're wide open. You have all these things. Let's see if you have it right now. That's mm -hmm. what he's doing. But I know that he's trying to set up that free kick, too. But again, to do that, he's going to have to have another clock stop, which is going to have to have an incomplete pass. Exactly. He would have needed one more timeout, then they could have pulled it off. But if the Raiders pass and if it's incomplete, they still can yeah. pull it off. I would be surprised if they do, but we'll see here. Third down and nine. No, they're just going to run it and cover it up, and that's the way the half is going to end. With a little pushy shovy and all of the rest. And so the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. First as Super Bowl appearance, a dominant. But but that one week extra was just magic. They still had to win in Philly, though, to get here, which they did last week as the kick is fielded by Knight from the five. And again, a solid hit as Darian Barnes, number 30, crunches him up at about the 27-yard line. And this Buck defense and Buck special teams have been crunching him all day. Look at this. Here's their defensive line. And we're talking about 
when you can do this and get that much pressure with just four guys, then then you can do anything in a secondary. Then then they could just zone. They could just wait back there. But it all starts with those four guys up front. Like Melissa was saying, they have to start getting some help to their pass protector. First half started in bright sunshine. Now the lights take full effect as the second half commences from the 27-yard line. Gannon over the middle, and the first pass of the half is complete, but for a very short gain. Porter makes the catch. Gannon in postseason against the Jets. Big second half, of course. Two TDs. They win going away against the Titans last week. 286 through the air and four touchdowns. And now this one, third line. You know, one of the things that Bill Callahan was saying is he likes to start the game with CBs, he calls them, as confidence builders for Rich Gannon. And I think part of it, his confidence builders didn't work. So now maybe he has to start with CBs again. Mm -hmm. Second down and seven. And that's caught over the middle by Doug Jolly, another guy who you figured could have emerged maybe as a big hero. That's his first catch of the game, the rookie tight end. And I think that these passes here are the confidence builders, but in having the confidence builders, I mean, they would be the short type of passes that you're going to have a high percentage of completion. And again, where the quarterback can get back, you know, throw quickly, just, you know, just get the ball out of there. Better watch out for Derek Brooks. You know, you talk about cluing or teeing or watching mm. quarterback's eyes. He's the best linebacker there is at that. A gap in the middle, as you can see. Third down and two, expecting pass. Get one to the outside, and that's incomplete. Kelly says, I didn't touch him. Intended for Marcus Knight, and there is no flag. Yeah, and that's when those confidence builders don't work, is when you have those short passes, the quick passes, and then you have another three and out. See, Kelly's playing real well on this. I mean, he just gets there in a jam, and, and it's hard It's hard to run a little quick or a short hook against tight coverage because there's no time to get separation. Leckler to punt. Carl Williams back for the Bucks. Fair catch called for it. At the 21, and a flag comes in at the end of the play. And one thing we talk about this crew being an all star crew and how you really don't like it. I mean, I believe the crew's working together, but this crew tonight in the first half, I think, has done a pretty good job. I yeah. mean, they've been conspicuous by their absence. They have been. And I think that's always the best officiated games, the ones that you you don't notice the officials. You don't talk about the officials and mm -hmm. illegal block in the back, number 26. Well, the kick was in the air. Ten yard penalty, first down. John, they can only pray it stays that way in this postseason. Penalty on Smith. Aerial coverage. Well, it's a it's a no-fly zone for like seven miles around. John, this is your dream, a no-fly zone. That's the way it should be. <laughs> That's why they, they finally got it right. <laughs> People shouldn't be up in those things. Tampa Bay starts from the 11-yard line early in the third quarter. And they start with Pittman as the tailback. All stop blocking. Pittman had a big half. And a big beginning of the second half as Romanowski finally runs him out at the 16 yard line. And let's take a look at the Buck Star track and what the key guys have done. Brad Johnson was a slow start, but then picked it up. Pittman, big half. And Keyshawn with four catchers. I think that was a big thing is Pittman or the or the Bucks being able to run the ball. You know they started out slowly and, and it looked like Brad Johnson couldn't get into any kind of rhythm. John Gruden calling the play started to go to Pittman in the run and then everything started to flow for the Buck offense. And that is the middle linebacker. That's Napoleon Harris who gets shaken up the rookie. And I think in the in the in the first half, I think this was a big thing. Just Pittman running here, getting a good block by Allstott, but but kind of gashing this Raider defense with runs. And then it just looked like the Raider defense was tired. It looked like you know Pittman is quick. He's making quick moves, and and the Raider defense looks like they're lethargic and slow. They don't look like. I'm just looking at their sideline. 
They don't look like they really. This is the Super Bowl. Yeah. This is the World Championship. This is it. I mean, they, you have the feeling that the Buccaneers were out there fighting for a World Championship. And I don't know that I have that same feeling about the Raiders. Right, either side of the ball. And of course, the Tampa Bay defense making the offense look lethargic. Second down, four. From the 17, a little toss back to Pittman. Speaking of Pittman, he came over from Arizona. Again, they had Dunn and Allstott in the backfield for so long. They let Dunn go. He signed with Atlanta. Brought Pittman in from Arizona. And as you can see, as a Cardinal, he had 200-yard games in his first three starts. Very promising beginning. Last 40 starts, none. We went into Tampa, and you know, you read the papers and you listen to people, and they seem to be very disappointed with Pittman. I'll never forget, Gruden told us, he said, you know what, he's playing a lot better than those stats indicate. Yeah, because he didn't look to his pass receiving. I mean, you know, when you put the whole thing, the number of yards that he gained running and pass receiving, he was doing a lot for this offense. Third and two from the 19 as Johnson has to step it up. And he's going to step out of a tackle, and he doesn't do that very often, but he does it with effectiveness here and on a third down with a gain of 10. Yeah, and, and in this football, in the NFL, the way it's played now, quarterbacks have to make that play right there. When you get third and, third and three, third and four, if there's nothing open, you have to be able to run for a first down. Now, in the quarterbacks in this game, I thought this would be done. I thought this would be part of it, but I thought the quarterback and the other team would be doing this, not Brad Johnson. His longest run of the season was 10 yards. For one thing about Brad Johnson, he is a tough guy. From the 29, Pittman. And for Brad Johnson, you think back to the Minnesota Vikings in 92. Gannon's there, but Gannon loses the starting spot to Sean Salisbury in the playoffs. And then Johnson gets drafted, and he's the third guy most of the year. And like Gannon, I mean, you look at their careers, and there are a lot of parallels. Journeymen don't get a chance to start, some injuries, and then all of a sudden they wind up in a Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, it's just the old stick to it You know, I mean, both these quarterbacks are tough guys. I mean, both of them have been, you know, had their ups and downs, and they stayed with it and stayed with it and then finally came out the other end. Gannon can't well as always can't wait to get back out. He wouldn't even take his helmet off on the sideline. Second down and eight from the 31. And that is caught by Keyshawn Johnson up to the 40 yard line and that will move the chains again. And the thing is is Keyshawn was really looking forward to this game. He says you know you can be good but you can't be great until you win a Super Bowl. But again, do you see Rod Woodson, 26, coming in here? And what Brad Johnson does, it's a slant. He puts the ball down. You see, he didn't run him in. You know, all those hits that they have, helmet to helmet, the safety and so on, a lot of them are caused by the quarterback. That's the opposite. That's the second time that Brad Johnson did that for Keyshawn Johnson. First and 10 at the 40-yard line. Softly. But a little high off the fingertips of Mike Allstott. You ever see that old thing where a guy gets so much muscle, you know, you know he gets muscle bound, muscle beach, and, and he, he can't lift his arm to comb his hair? Did you feel that way about Allstott? No question. That, that time, that, you know, that, that, that his shoulders and arms and, you know, stuff were so big that he just couldn't lift them up to catch the ball. Always goes to the Pro Bowl. Well, because they list him as a fullback, and yep. he's kind of half fullback, half tailback. Although I will say, in this game, he's playing this position a lot, which is the fullback position. Hybrid. And now he goes into a running back mode as they run a little misdirection up to the 43-yard line. You know, I'm looking at the Bucks, John, and you see all stuff. They have so many, you know, recognizable guys. They're places they're funny, sap, and you know, Keyshawn and guys like that. And then, you know, Mike is quiet, but everybody knows about him. You see, he does play a distinctly different game. Well, yeah, and and you know, I mean, they like him when they get down close to the goal line, and you know, he's a hard runner. And sometimes in a game when the defense gets worn down, it'll take five, six, seven guys jumping on him as a nickname, A Train. I mean, he has a lot of things going for him too. Raider D has to step it up right here. Third down and seven. And there's a flag, and Jerovicious makes the catch for the moment. A first down as he gets pushed out of bounds. Now the call. Well, Joe Jerovicious is going through something, isn't he? His mm. wife has a baby, and the baby is sick and in the hospital, and, you know, and, and 
you know, you're torn, you Offside. should be with your wife and your baby. Defense. That penalty is declined. Result of the play. First down. Yeah, you should be with your wife and baby, but then you know you got a, a championship game last week, a Super Bowl game this week, and you talk about a guy that has a lot of emotion and a lot of stuff going up inside that helmet. That's Joe Juravich right sure. now. No doubt. Didn't practice before the Philly game. Made the key play early in the game. Meanwhile, Tim Brown, his wife up in Oakland, expecting twins at any moment. That penalty, meanwhile, on Upshaw again for offside. A couple of them in the first half. And here's Pittman who gets racked up back in the line of scrimmage by Perella, who leads the charge. Yeah, and this this is a type of thing, you know, we talked about the first half, how the how the Bucks had the ball and the and the Raiders were three and out and then time of possession. This is what it does. It just wears this defense down. And and I could see it in the first half that the Raider defense was worn down and now you know, it just carried over in the second half. They can't stop him. Of course, they had another stupid penalty, too. Second, yeah, second and 11. No, and that's what discipline is. You know, they always talk about, you know, discipline. It's not, you know, that you drink your milk and cookies, but it's that you don't jump off sides. You don't do those stupid things. Good protection that time. Perfect pass. Jero Vicious. Deep into Oakland territory, out of bounds at the at the 14 yard line. Warren Sapp saying first down, and I think Al the key you said was was good protection, and that's the thing. Watch this group right here and the protection. You see they form a perfect pocket. Brad Johnson can look. He looks to his left. He can step up cleanly. What? He looks to his left and then he comes back and then and then, then he can step up and put everything on that ball to Joe Juravicius. But when you can do that, when you can give Brad Johnson that kind of that kind of time, he makes those kinds of throws. 33 yards to Jerevicius, who caught a 23-yarder in the first half. All stop. Taken down by Roderick Coleman after a minimal game. Drive began back at the 11 yard line after the Raiders trying to make some sort of a statement offensively go three and out on, on their series and meanwhile here goes Tampa marching all the way down the field and then they make no statement defensively except catching I mean I mean right now all they're doing out there is catching and they're taking the blows I mean you know if this were a heavyweight fight Tampa Bay would have mm -hmm. been getting a lot of body blows so the big eyes of sap on the sideline I mean he can smell it now second down and nine Johnson on a roll throws caught out here by Dilger and the tight end gets down to the one yard line so Dilger gets into the act that's his first catch <laughs> Brad Johnson he is starting to have fun now and this is after you get the running game going then you can do this you can go play pass you can go bootleg which this play is you know and and have guys wide open but you know if, if you can't run then you can't do these kinds of things so it all started in that second quarter when the Bucks got their running game going and they always say to keep your head up and you get kicked right in the face when you do it first and goal from the one and they're going to throw it into the end zone and incomplete trying to go back to Dilger again Flag. Flag down back at the 10 yard line, and this one is against Tampa. You know, whatever whatever that thing is that that you know you have to come up with to to, to change momentum, to make a play, to get something to happen. The the Raiders don't Everybody look like they're worried hands, about that. Hands in the face, number 67. Offense. 10 yard penalty. Replay first down. We see enough games. I mean, the body language is so big. And again, we can give you some isolated shots to show you things like that, but you just, there's no fire from anybody. No, and that's the way I feel. I mean, just looking at the sideline and, and, and looking at the guys on the field that, that there isn't. I mean, this this is emotional. This is a, this is for the championship of the world. This is Super Bowl 37 mm -hmm. we're talking about here. Tampa Bay understands it. First and goal now from the 11 yard line. Here goes Pittman to the eight yard line. You know, and John Gruden is one of those guys, a kind of a disciple of a Bill Walsh philosophy that 
says that you throw early and then and then once you get the lead in the second half is where you do most of your running. Mm -hmm. I tell you they've done a lot of running on their right side behind Cozy Coleman and Kenyatta Walker. Watch these two guys right here. They've they've been doing that all day just taking that tackle and driving him right into the ground and that four hole. The, you know, between the tackle and the guard has been a big, big hole. Bunch the receivers to the left, spread out along the tree trunk, and the pass is caught by McCardell. Touchdown. Well, they got here mainly with their defense, but then with Gruden, John said we really came along offensively. During the latter stages of the season, and it's all coming to fruition tonight. Yeah, and they and they got it in the in the first half when they started the running. Then they got the pass protection because now the Raiders are tired. They're not getting the pass rush. They're 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 missing tackles. They're doing all the things that bad defenses do because the Bucks put them in that position. Gramatica, the 27th point. That drive. 89 yards and it took more than half the quarter almost eight minutes 27 to 3 Buccaneers in Hawaii some of these guys coming with us as well Gannon and Johnson among others as Gannon starts this drive with Charlie Garner and now the Raiders obviously going to no huddle with 20 minutes left in the game you know and the Buck defense has been playing the same group of guys you know four defensive linemen two linebackers not playing Al Singleton and playing their fifth defensive back Dwight Smith the whole game so they've been playing them four two five second and two again into the outside and it is intercepted by Dwight Smith the nickelback and he gets by Gannon and goes in for the touchdown He tried to hit Jerry Rice. Instead, it's a 44-yard interception return. You know, 4 2 5, and Dwight Smith is a 5. He's playing right corner, and he's playing out here on Jerry Rice. And you see him off here. He's just playing zone. And he just reads it. You see, he was he was like 10 yards off of Jerry Rice. And and as we said the whole time, the thing that these guys do the best is they key the quarterback's eye. White Smith was like 10 yards off, just watching the quarterback all the way, and he got a big jump on that one. Third pick of Gannon in the game. The other two by Dexter Jackson and Gramatica puts one through. And the Gulf Coast is starting to rock already, I guarantee you. 34 to 3, Buccaneers. Dwight Smith still exulting. Hugged there by John Lynch on the sideline, recounting the play. Derek Brooks, the defensive player of the year. And for Gannon, three picks. Yep, and he looked at Jerry Rice on that one, and you know we said how the the Buck defense is just playing zone. Zone. I mean, they're just making their zones deeper now and just reading Gannon. Two hopper, Marcus Knight from the six, and again, great coverage. And I go back to Gruden telling us each time we did Tampa this year, you know, I'm really worried about kickoff return coverage. They got that fixed. Even Warren Sapp brought up that the other day. He said, the, only, the only bad thing we got about this team is our kickoff coverage. It's as good as it gets today. That was Corey Ivey. From the 18, Gannon again going to work with less than five minutes remaining in the third, and it just continues. This time it's Ellis Wims with the sack. You know, let's watch that interception again by Dwight Smith. And you'll see the coverage. We're talking about five defensive backs. Here's Rondé Barber. Here's two, three, four, five defensive backs. Now, right here is Dwight Smith. And you see see how off he is. And, and he's just looking in and, and reading Rich Gannon. And he got a jump of about seven yards on that play. 
Watch him here. He's coming off. He's not looking at Jerry Rice. He's looking at Rich Gannon. When Rich Gannon gets ready to throw, he gets ready to jump. And when he throws, he beats Jerry Rice to the ball. But that's all they're doing. You know what I'm saying? How are they stopping Jerry Rice? How are they stopping Tim Brown? How are they stopping? All they're doing is playing a zone, and as this game goes on, that zone's getting softer. And there is Greg Spires, who had a sack and a big first half, the defensive end, who's hurt. Greg Spires had a had a great start to this game. Remember this one here? Here he is on Lincoln Kennedy, and then you see him just pushing here, and then and then he goes to make the tackle. Looks like he just got his leg twisted there. But hey, that was big. I mean, I think you know the start. Greg Spires kind of started it out for this Buccaneer front four, and then Simeon Rice came up next, and then the middle guys started taking over. So it hasn't been just one. It hasn't just been Warren Sapp, or it hasn't just been Simeon Rice. This guy here has made a lot of big plays today for this defense. Well, so much was made of the number one offense against the number one defense, and we talked about it during the pregame show, John, and it's reflected in the score, it's reflected in that, and historically, defensively, the, the better, the great defense beats the great offense. Well, yeah, I mean, they, they're proving it here right now. Second and 11. Gannon finally airs one out and, and wouldn't you know it he still completes that one to a Buccaneer. That's Jermaine Phillips yeah, with an out of bounds interception. Yeah, and just complete frustration is is has come in now. I mean that's that's the thing. And and that's that's what this Buck defense does to you. I mean they're very physical and they do all the physical things to you, but but they also do they also do those things where they just make you be patient and then you want to be patient and then pretty soon you're down like this. It's 34 to 3. You're still trying to be patient. Third and 11 from the 17. Gannon over the middle. Finally, a big play through the air to Doug Jolly, the tight end up to the 43 yard line. Much made of one versus one, but let's expand it a little bit. And if you take a team in the top three in offense against the top three. There have been nine such games in the history of the Super Bowl. The defense has won eight, and right now we're on our way to nine out of ten. You know, I thought maybe that was something that used to be true and wasn't true as much today, the way football is being played. But I don't agree with that. I don't agree with what I thought. I agree that the that, that defense will win championships. And here is Rice, and there's a flag because there's a a face mask Brian Kelly with a face mask and Brian's trying to say no no I got his shoulder pad you know these face masks are getting so big now that you can start off for a shoulder <laughs> and on the way to grab a shoulder pad you grab a hunk of that face mask because they stick out so far but it was just something that you know we talk about defense and and this defense There's just no smothered the, the Raider play. offense the player grabbed his jersey Second down. Kelly. Ryan Kelly was right. Yeah. <laughs> Watch him here. He is here. He is on Jerry Rice right here. After Jerry Rice catches the ball. No, well, that wasn't mm -hmm. even close to a yeah. face mask, was it? Just a shirt. At least the one official threw it, and then another official came and told him that you were wrong, and that was Jerry Rice's first catch. Yeah, 42 minutes into the game. Gannon throws it over the middle and that's incomplete intended for Doug Jolly. Well the Raiders began the day with a field goal off a pick and then their last six possessions ugly interception punt punt then the end of the half three and out to start this half another pick for a touchdown and uh, the total yardage is 108 yards for Oakland at this point in the game. You know, you know what I think Tampa Bay or John Gruden did is, is they kind of both started out the same way. You know, trying to throw the ball and up pace and tempo. It didn't work. He went to the running game. The Raiders didn't. Third and four from the 48-yard line, and that's deflected over the middle in and out of the hands of Porter, and a flag down at the Tampa 45. 
you know, and he was able to change that thing. I mean, I think he was the first one to get his offense out of a funk. I mean, they were both kind of in a funk when they started. Gruden got his offense out. Callahan never did get Anderson his offense turns. out. 53, defense. Automatic first down the spot of the foul. Shelton Quarles. I mean, look at that, <laughs> that face. Al Hirschfeld, the great character, is, you know, died this week at the age of 99. I only wish he had lived a little longer and just once drawn Gruden. But, you know, when you look at Gruden's face, it is a Hirschfeld character. Yeah. <laughs> and you wonder how one face can get in those many positions. <laughs> First and 10 from the 46. Side on to John Ritchie. Inside the 40 to the 39. Yeah, Rich Gannon is as great at that throwing throwing balls at different angles you know and he says the way football is today you know it used to be that pass rushers would just rush and now now they try and take lanes away from you get their hands up and those kinds of things so he said there's sometimes that the only way you can get it in a lane is to throw it sidearm mm -hmm. like he did there. So he's like a Don Drysdale of football. Yeah. The one. He, does, he doesn't bring it with as much heat those times. <laughs> <laughs> no. Second down and three. And that's incomplete. Yeah, if you watch John Gruden, uh, I mean, Rich Gannon's arm motion, you see the left one there is the over the top. You know, just the thing we throw over the top. Then he has the three quarters where it's down a little more. And then the sidearm on, on the right there just to try and find that lane to throw it through. But a quarterback has to be able to do all those things. You know, throw the different throws and kind of move around in the pocket a little to play in this league. Third and three now from the 39-yard line. Gannon has time this time and then throws and it is caught out of the end zone and wouldn't you know it Porter beats the secondary but the pass is thrown a hair too long. And you, know, you look at the future of the Raiders and this is Jerry Porter is going to be the guy because it now you know if they don't have him in here again as I said earlier there's not a lot of speed there. And you see, he's, he's just going to go right by Dwight Smith there. And he, he has so much speed. Watch him here. I mean, he can turn on another gear. Dwight Smith just fell down. I don't know. This could be a catch, Al. You know, at this point, he got yeah. there, and then he drags that left foot. I think that's a touchdown. Well, and Gannon got up to the line, and you could almost tell by the way he was slow in getting to the line, and they were going to go for it on fourth down here, that the Raiders are going to challenge. But you saw Jerry Porter's speed there. I mean, he, I mean, he had a gear, and then mm -hmm. he got in, in front, behind Dwight Smith, and then okay. the ball was in the air, and the he had another the gear. On the field, that it was an incomplete pass. We'll reveal the play. Now, when Carollo goes over, they look for two things, obviously, inbounds and then possession. So the first thing he does, he, he, he looks at the feet. You look at the feet first, and then you look for possession. So now I think we have to look at possession yeah, yeah. because he did have feet. Right. There's a, the right foot and then he drags the left. But the ball the ball is rolling around a little bit. But he still has control of him. And it doesn't yeah. hit the ground or he doesn't drop it or anything. Yeah, but the refs, think he, the refs think, hate, they hate to see that, though. They, they hate yeah. when that ball begins to roll around. See, his feet look like they're, I mean, the left foot, he, he's dragging it. The right foot is clearly in. But the ball is rolling, and you have to exhibit control of it as you're going out of bounds. And I, I don't think he is. I don't think Carollo overturns this. Okay, just to be contrarian, I think he does. <laughs> Wait, well, maybe because I think he has control of it too. John, anything to hold an audience but at no, this point. I mean, I mean, he has both hands. On it. He runs into the wall and doesn't drop yep. it. But it's rolling around, and you know I, I have a feeling Carollo is going to say he just he doesn't have. I think control, control right there. He has good control, and now he's out. I mean now, yeah. mm -hmm. I mean I know he has to maintain control. I mean had he fallen down out of bounds, I know he has to maintain maintain control of the ball and those things. But I don't know if he's going to say that the ball did move as he brought it into his chest. That would be. Well, Corolla is going to take uh, only about half the allotted time. He has seen enough.
As Whitey Herzog once said when asked how did you get thrown out of the seventh game of the World Series with a score eight nothing Whitey said I'd seen enough. <laughs> After reviewing the play, it's been determined that the receiver possessed and caught the ball with both feet inbounds throughout the process of making the catch. The players reverse to a touchdown. There you Oakland go. is now huh? charged with a timeout. You see, so much for Tom Brady trying to, you know, sit on the ball last year. Right, right. <laughs> Sometimes contrary is good. <laughs> No, I thought I thought that was a heck of a catch, though. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, I mean, to be able to to keep the feet in and, and drag that in and the control. I mean, he just had yeah. both hands out there, and, and this guy's going to be the future of, of the Oakland Raiders. You say who's going to be their star five years from now? The Raiders' star five years from now is going to be Jerry Porter. So Porter scores a touchdown. A delayed reaction touchdown, but nonetheless, it's 34-9 as Oakland finally gets into the end zone. And he will go for two. And then the question always come up: Why did you wait that long to throw deep to Jerry Porter? Absolutely. Bucks in everybody, and Gannon goes down in the arms of Simeon Rice, almost untouched around the corner. And when he gets untouched around the corner, his first step is so quick, and then he gets right into that second, third, and fourth. Once him in race, he's darn near in a sprinter stance there. Now, if you try and block him, Barry Sims gets out there a little late, but he's way too quick for that. I mean, there's no way that you're going to be able to step inside and then step back outside and ever get Simeon Rice. There's a guy that's had a heck of a year. You know, there's Simeon Rice. Remember when he was in Arizona and people weren't sure? Uh, and then he came to Tampa and he was kind of, you know, pretty good, but, you know, not big enough to play the run and didn't do all those things. This year, this year, he has been a complete player. And let's, uh, on the subject of receivers and Jerry Porter, here's Lynn Swan. Well, Al, thank you very much. Remember back in the AFC Championship game? I know you do, John. We were watching it together. We watched Jerry Porter drop a pass in the end zone. You recall that play? Right. Well, during the week, I talked to Jerry Porter, and I asked him what happened on that play. He's such a sure-handed guy. He said, Swan, I looked down to see where I was on the football field, took my eye off the ball. I said, well, now what do you think after you, you've had that experience? He says, in the same situation, I'll never take my eye off the ball. Right there. That's a marking receiver that's going to get better year after year. In one week, he realized, focus on the ball, you make the catch, keep your body in bounds, it's a touchdown. You know, John, you're talking about the future, too. I mean, and Porter clearly is, but the Raiders are going to have to really cut and pair here in the offseason because they're going to be millions of dollars over the cap as the line drive kickoff is taken at the seven yard line. And this is Dwight Smith running it back up to the 30. Well, we have John Lynch mic'd up. And uh, let's check in and find out what was going on. I'll tell you one thing. I remember when I got out of coaching and came up to the booth, and then a couple years later, I went down on the sideline in a scrimmage. I forgot how hard they hit. Yeah, you know, when you're up here and it looks like they're just taking guys down, when you get down there in the field and you hear it, that, you know that's some hit. And there's a flag coming in as Pittman picks up a couple. I thought that uh, that earlier mic'd up with Lynch, and this is a hole here against Tampa. Was uh, was the most revealing thing we heard from the mic'd up today when he said that you know they're running every Holding. play we practice against. 67 offense, 10 yard penalty, replay first down. And and part of that is John Gruden and kind of knowing that offense and knowing the philosophy, and a big part of it is is, is Monty Kiffin, the old defensive coordinator who always has his team ready to play. I mean that I mean. You look and you talk about a guy that has never drank decaf in his life, who is always up, who's always, you know, coaching and teaching and has chairs and stuff out there. That's old Monty Kiffin. First and ten from the 21 after the holding call. Pittman. 
on that mic up and we got a lot of publicity about it this week having the opportunity to mic up Lynch and mic up Rice and not play it live we listen to it and then you know figure out what you can and can't hear Jerry took his mic off second half he said enough of this stuff yeah I think I, I think that's okay when you're when you're winning I think the stuff that goes on on a losing sideline and a losing bench uh, is is a lot of frustration that maybe they don't want you to hear nor do they want to hear themselves mm -hmm. now on this side here this this is going <laughs> to get better and a heck of a lot happier if they keep going this way second and 18 from the 23 Roman Askins had a fairly silent day one of the few times the play clock has gone all the way down. And it's out to the 27 yard line for Pittman. You know, John, I begin to wonder sometimes what do certain people think? I'm wondering right now, what is Tony Dungy thinking? What is Bill Parcells thinking? What would John McKay, the late John McKay, have been thinking right now? Well, I think John McKay would be happy as heck because his son, Rich McKay, is here and. He really didn't want Rich to go into football, but if you're going to, then go in, put everything in there, and do this. Bill Parcells is probably thinking, Geez, if I were going to go back, if I knew I was going to go back <laughs> into it, I'd rather be here today than where I am. And Tony Dunsey probably has to be thinking, Geez, maybe if they just gave me one year, one more year, this would be me. Yeah, it's got to be pretty bittersweet for Tony. I mean, who really molded this team, and then watch Gruden get him over the top. And there's a flag here as the third period is nine seconds left. John McKay of course uh, with an offside against Oakland was the original coach after a great career at USC and out of the womb this team as an expansion team was 0 and 26 offside defense number 50 five yard penalty replay third down Eric Barton of course Johnny uh, McKay had the, the greatest of all lines you know one one time after one of those losses the reporter said what do you think of your team's execution he said I'm all for it. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was John McKay. You know, they talk about guys with, with great one-liners, and John McKay was that guy. But I'll tell you another thing. I, I played for John McKay one year, and and I knew him as a coach and a friend, and he was a heck of a – he was a brilliant football coach. No question. And died about a year ago. 34-9, end of three. Super Bowl 37 will continue from San Diego. Back in San Diego, Al Michaels, John Madden, Melissa Stark, Lynn Swan, Super 37 with 15 minutes left in regulation and a 25 point Tampa Bay lead. There's one thing about both of these teams, uh, neither one of them use shotgun. And you know, shotgun, I'm thinking of this third and long, you'd usually be in a shotgun situation, but Tampa Bay won't be, the Raiders won't be, because neither of them have used it all year. Not a single snap on either side third and nine and here's Pittman and he gets stopped here so the Raiders were able to stop him we'll get the ball back well you can tell what John Gruden's doing here he's he's trying to run time off the clock I mean he's got and that's that's what he is and that's what he does I mean he he gets a lead and then he sits on it and tries to run the clock out coaches talk about balance 31 running plays for Tampa tonight 30 passing plays and they're going to end up a lot of unbalanced because he'll he'll run the rest mm -hmm. of the game. And that is blocked and that's exactly what the Raiders need of anything to get back in the game and it's taken into the end zone by Eric Johnson for a touchdown. Well. Well now he's not going to sit on that lead. Yeah, we talked about momentum changers and, and somewhere you have to come up with a momentum changer and it usually comes on a special teams play. It could come on a return. It could come on a block. This one here, it comes on a block. What's number 51? You're going to see him right here. He's a guy. He gets his his right hand up. Johnson gets his right hand up, knocks it over, doesn't catch the ball, but they get it and have a convoy going into the end zone. Well, the Bucks have their Johnson to Johnson, and so do the Raiders. Tim Johnson to Eric Johnson. Tim, Tim Johnson tried to find it and couldn't, and he was looking for it. Eric Johnson found it. That's what a special teams coach does after they get that play that does change the momentum. It was Bob Casulo exulting on the sideline. Tupa did not have a punt block. 
all season, and now the Raiders will go for two. Yeah, the Raiders had a, a punt block last week. I mean, it wasn't a block. I mean, the punt block was on. The punter had a hold, and they got the ball there, and that was a momentum changer for him last week, too, against Tennessee. So 14 16 remaining. We've gone from 34 to 3 to 34 15 and maybe 17. The two point conversion. Gannon and throws it out of the back of the end zone. Intended for Tim Brown. So again, they fail on a two point. The margin is now 19, but not that long ago it was 31 with 14 16 left in regulation. Now the question arises, John, do you at this point attempt an onside kick? No, I would I would think not. I would think if the Raiders were to kick an onside kick, they'd play right into Tampa Bay's hands because if Tampa Bay were to get the ball here, they could just keep pounding the rock. I think I'd kick them deep, try and stop them deep, and play a field position game that way, which I agree. Yeah, what they need is a three and out now, or create a three and out as Aaron Stecker brings it back. And he gets tackled at the 23-yard line. And you can log on right now to SuperBowl.com, cast your vote for tonight's MVP, and then there's no at this moment clear-cut choice. But you would think if it if the game continues to go this way, it has to be a Tampa Bay defensive player right. because up until now they've really set the tone. But as they say in golf, there's a lot of golf left to be played. There's yes. some football left to be played here. There is. But I think if 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 the Bucks want to go conservative, I think that's why you want to kick them down here. Let them be conservative here, and you'll get good field position. If you want to open it up, then you're looking for a pick. Huge defensive stand for the Raiders here. And it begins very nicely for Oakland as Pittman gets knocked down. And finally, the emotion. You can see the emotion among the defenders. Well, you can just feel it. And you can even look across at their bench now. I mean, more players are starting to stand up. They're starting to get into this game. And, and you wonder if it's just too much too late. But 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 now you can see that the Tampa Bay has to make a decision here. Do you want to stay conservative and play this this clock game here or do you want to try and get first downs? Second and nine from the second and ten from the twenty four yard line. Johnson underthrown but Johnson is there to kneel down make the catch and Rod Woodson finally knocks him out of bounds but not until he picks up a first down there was no one out there on Keyshawn Johnson the corner blitz from that side and there was no one covering Keyshawn Johnson that was a heck of a thing by Brad Johnson to see that that he looks a corner comes off and Keyshawn Johnson was out there all by himself Look at that out here. You see, he sees the blitz. Charles Woodson comes, and because number 24 Woodson comes, he was the guy that was on Keyshawn Johnson, so there was no one on Keyshawn Johnson. And Charles Woodson on that blitz, no factor at all. From the 42-yard line. Pittman. Anthony Dorsett first to hit him. Short game. You know, and you wonder about that play. You wonder if the Raiders really needed that. You know, I mean, if they if they needed to bring that corner off the corner to give them that play. And here's, here's the play that I'm talking about is you just go you see the corner Charles Woodson coming from that side and there was no one out there at all on Keyshawn Johnson the closest guy being Rod Woodson. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean strategically why do you send a guy with a plate in his leg in that situation on a blitz. I don't think they needed that. Second down and eight. From the 44 yard line. Brad buying time, chased by Cooper, throws, and that's incomplete. Third down. Because I'll tell you what that play did. I mean, that, you know, now it's it's time and it's field position and, and those kinds of things. And and it gave it gave the, the Bucks some better field position, which if they do turn the ball over or do have to you know, have a change of possession and punt it. The Raiders field position is not going to be as good. Now Chuck Bresnahan's defense trying to get the ball back. After Tampa Bay picked up a quick first down. He has defenses all over himself doesn't he? He has them on a card. He has them up and down his arm. <laughs> he could look at any of his body parts or in front of him. 
third down to play. <laughs> third and eight. Uh, Chris Cooper came across. Was he induced? No. Encroachment. 75. Defense. Five yard penalty. Third down. Oh, baby, you go from third and eight to third and yeah. three. And this is another stupid one. I mean, here he is right here. All you have to do is look at the ball, and you don't move until the ball snapped. I mean, there's no way that you can line up on the ball and do that. I, I, you know, I mean, those, those are things that as a coach or an ex-coach drive you nuts. That would drive you nuts. Yeah, he's right there. The ball's right in front of him. All you have to do is watch the ball. Go in the ball. Is that a third and long? Third and three now from the... 49-yard line. They get pressure on Johnson. He has to throw off his back leg and not even close. And with Charles Woodson covering on the play, there is a flag on the play. Thought I saw a flag, and now it's confirmed. Yeah, there was a flag right there where Charles Woodson is. And now they may say that the, the pass was not even catchable. They may take the flag away because it's not catchable. Pass interference. Ooh. 24. Defense. Automatic first down. Wow. See if this is catchable to begin with. Yeah, you see, here's Keenan McCardell, and it's a little stop and go. And what they do is they, that's what they try to do to Charles Woodson, and that oh, ball was man. out of bounds. Oh, there man. Was, I mean, it's, there, not, it's not a catchable no ball. Yeah. Now, if they were going to call something, oh, look, look when that flag came out. I mean, he could have called yeah. holding maybe earlier after five yards, but pass interference, I mean, there's no way right there, let's they say that left hand or that right hand up there on McCardell was pass interference. The ball, I mean, the ball was thrown out of bounds. Absolutely. If you're wondering, can you review whether it was thrown out of bounds or not? No, that's not a reviewable play. 16-yard penalty, 35-yard line. Pittman, good juke step, stutter move, and finally James pulls him down at the 11-yard line. And it started with those two penalties. Started with the offsides, that gave him that third and three, and then the pass interference penalty. And now John Gruden is in the position that he wants to. Now, again, he can pound the rock. He can just run it at him. He can run time off the clock because he has the field position to do it, and that's exactly what he's doing. Get the ball out there to Pittman. You know, get out there on that edge. And I'll tell you, this is one of the teams that pulls their center. Watch Jeff Christie. He's coming out here. He's the center right here. You see, he not only pulls, but right there he's going to get a block. Or he's going to miss a block right there. But, but Jeff Christie, I think, was one of the first centers to ever pull and one of the better centers at pulling. Pittman over 100 now at 120, and here's Allstott to the nine-yard line. And, and for the Raiders, this is a, a nightmarish series. I mean, you, you start with an ineffective corner blitz. You then have a penalty that goes from third and eight to third and three. You then have an interference call, and you then have Pittman break one. And the big thing was right after they had the momentum changer. I mean, that was when they got back into the game with the punt block and the touchdown. Now their defense has to go out and do the job, and their defense has kind of let them down. Second down and eight. John Gruden is going to run this ball and take time off the clock. Toss to Pittman. Slips down. Stopped at the 11. Third down. Yeah, I was talking about Jeff Christie earlier. Is the, I remember when he was the, you know, the all-pro center from, from Minnesota. Played for the Vikings there for years. And as I watch this offensive line, I think they've improved somewhat during the year. And I think he's playing better. Just watching Phil and watching him play. I think Jeff Christie's playing better than he has in five years. And I think when you know, Brad Johnson started going and passing and the offensive line, they started running a little better. I think he was a pretty important part of that. Third and 10 from the 11. Out into the flat, all stop. He's taken down by James, so they'll have to settle for a Gramatica field goal attempt of about mm, 28 yards or so. I think the way John Gruden's playing the game now, it's a it's a game of clock. It's a game of score and and clock and 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 rather than you know forcing anything, doing anything stupid here, he wants to take as much time off that clock as he can, and then take the field goal and just play from there. And they'll take all the time off the clock they can prior to this attempt. 27 yards. 
two for the hole. And snap this with the play clock at three, and then it's juggled. Is it your premium in disguise? No, he just falls on it. I'll bet you Garrow came into his head at that point. I bet you Garrow came into everyone's head at that <laughs> point. <laughs> But at least he just went down. There was no way that he was going to throw that or do anything else with it. So the Raiders stop him, but not the way they wanted. 9.02 left in regulation. So 9.02 remaining after the juggle snap by Tupa. Dramatica can't kick the field goal, doesn't even have the opportunity. And now Gannon at the 22. Three receivers bunched to the left. And throwing to the left. Off of the tight end, Jolly reaches for the first down. A little short, second and one, and the Raiders now have to go quickly. You know, one of the good matchups today has been Warren Sapp against Frank Middleton. Frank Middleton, you know, played for Tampa Bay, and they kind of know each other, practiced against each other, and Warren Sapp's a lot quicker than Frank Middleton is, but Frank Middleton's a pretty tough guy. Second and one. And they throw it to Wheatley coming out of the backfield. And Wheatley has the first down. They've maneuvered their way up to the 38-yard line. Yeah, I was looking at this play. It was just two plays ago, and you can see what I'm talking about. Middleton. Watch Middleton here on Sap. He's going he's gonna to go, and he gets a push, and then he's going to grab him around the neck. Just right there and bring him back in. Frank Middleton has it. You do anything you have to the guy in front of you, but don't let him get to your quarterback. Injury time out here. Shelton Quarles, the Tampa linebacker, is Warren, the injured player. Warren Sapp was telling us the other day. He said, "You know, he said, so I've been here for eight years, and he said we laid some hard bricks. <laughs> and he said we want to win a Super Bowl. And one of the big things he wants is he said, you know, they call Tampa Bay like Tampa Bay, Tampa Town. He said, I want a city." He said, if we win the Super Bowl, I want Tampa Bay to be called a city. He said, we want to represent a city. And people to know it as Tampa because ever since you know they, they started getting a, a collection of sports teams they name they name it Tampa Bay the city is Tampa the area is Tampa Bay for what it's worth not much we'll be back injury timeout. <laughs> John's dad a uh, linebacker at one time for the Pittsburgh Steelers very successful businessman. John went to Stanford as a, as a quarterback, was a baseball pitcher there. Was drafted by the Florida Marlins and actually threw the first pitch ever in a minor league game for that organization as the pass by Gannon is tipped. Quarles came out. That's Warren Sapp tipping it. You saw Quarles who was hurt. He was assisted off the field and Nate Webster is in at linebacker for him. Yeah, we talked about the Buccaneers in this in this base defense and what they've been doing all night is with the five defensive backs. Here's Wande Barber again coming off the slot. He's been on the slot all night, which is really like a linebacker. So they're playing like four defensive backs and the fifth defensive back, Wande Barber, is playing like the weak side linebacker. Second and ten. And that is caught by Jerry Rice, but only up to the 41 yard line. Third down coming up, under eight minutes remaining. You know, we're talking about John Lynch and when he came in the league from Stanford and all that stuff. And he said that Brad Culpepper told him once, he said, you know, remember Brad Culpepper used to play defensive line for the Bucs? He said, You come into this league with a silver spoon in your mouth mm -hmm. and you make it in the NFL, then you've done something. Yeah. He did it. Third and seven from the 41. Gannon, second off, working the progressions, and then finally finds the open guy. And it's Jolly who got away from Barber, and that's a first down of the 46 yard line. You see the difference in pass protection or in no pass protection. I mean, earlier, or the whole game, Gannon has had no protection and not been able to get rid of him. And this last play, I mean, he has all kinds of protection. And then you give Rich Gannon or any quarterback at the NFL this kind of time, he's he, he's going he's going to make completion from the 45-yard line now. Corner blitz, look out, here comes Barber, and he got there just as the pass was released, intended for Jerry Rice. 
They yeah, disguise, they, yeah, they just disguise it so much on the linemen back off. The, everybody's coming from all these different angles. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing that is so tough. I mean, here's here's a corner, and he's coming from this position here. And and I think that's a problem with playing three wide receivers. Is you bring nickel, then nickel brings Rondé Barber as a slot corner, and as a slot corner, he is a great blitzer from that backside, just like that. Second down and ten from the 45-yard line. Gannon, and that's incomplete. And there is a flag down. The flag looks in the area of holding, doesn't it? Offensive holding. Mm -hmm. Holding. 65. Offense. 10 yard penalty. Replay second down. Barry Sims. Well, Jerry Rice limited to two grabs, nine yards. Brown caught that one pass early for a first down. That was almost a highlight offensively of Oakland's first half. So you have three catches for the two guys who will each be a first ballot Hall of Famer for 18 yards. Yeah, and again, part of that was coverage. You know, they've just been playing that the nickel defense, that soft cover two zone. And the big part of it, again, was a pass rush and not let Gannon do what he wanted to do to get the ball to Rice and Brown. Second and 20. The Raiders have not run a single running play in this half. And, of course, the score has dictated that for the most part. They were down 20 to 3 at the half. And there's a sidearm swing to Garner. And he gets forced out of bounds at the 48-yard line. About 13 yards shy of the first. Yeah, we were talking about Rich Gannon and how he throws the ball from different angles. And here's that sidearm one. You know where he has to do it? He's getting a rush, and he has to find Charlie Garner and get a lane to it. But you see, he's looking here, and he's looking for his lane, and he's going to find it out there to the right. See it? And as he, as he sees it, then he has to just put it out there. Third and 13. Be something. I'll tell you again, Jerry Rice is the inside receiver and he just runs right down the slot. We're talking about that soft zone. Here's Jerry Rice. He's going to come down and run a post. He just runs right through the zone. There's no bump or anything. He has two safeties on either side of him. He gets behind those two deep safeties and Rich Gannon hits him perfectly. Again, it's a, you know, why didn't you do that sooner? So it's 34 to 21. They'll try to shave it to 11. Two point conversion. And it's Porter. Was he forced out? They're going to say no. He was he was out. And the back judge is there saying no, sir. Nate Webster made contact with him and now they'll congregate and determine whether he was forced out but the back judge is emphatically saying uh-uh and the back judge Don Carey saying no sir and also there is a flag down again if the receiver if the receiver is up in the air and he is pushed out of bounds if he's in bounds when he catches a ball and if his both feet are off the ground like that and he is pushed out then that would be a completed pass that that should be challenged I'm going to check it to see if this is even reviewable there in, it's not a flag what was thrown out is the challenge flag this this is actually not reviewable the act of forcing a player out of bounds is not reviewable one of the little crazy permutations and the Raiders are being told that right yeah. now and that is a crazy one because they put the instant replay in for boundaries yep. and to me this would come under the rule of boundaries well that's Fred Miletnikov going wild wow, but this is you know by rule you can't review this the if you could review that, that would have been a two-point play. Because mm -hmm. if he's up in the air and would have been inbounds and is knocked out of bounds, Oakland then that would be two points. On the field, 
that the receiver caught the ball in bounds. We'll review the play. Well, they can they can review that, but we've already been told by Mike Pereira that they can't challenge a force out. So clearly he's out of bounds. The Raiders are going to challenge. I mean, if, that, if this is the rule, I don't know what they're challenging here because there's nothing to challenge. You can't challenge the force out part of it. Yeah, but that comes up all the time, Al. I mean, I mean, they, they they say they can challenge things and they say they can't, and then they always challenge things that they can't challenge, and sometimes don't challenge things that they can. Well, we we're, we've already heard from Mike Pereira, who's the head of officials, who says you cannot challenge a force out. So if they're going to challenge, you came down in bounds. Clearly, it's not even close. He did not come down in bounds and what you're doing here if you use the challenge is you're costing yourself a timeout yeah but then Bill Carollo should have should have told Mike uh, 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 Bill Callahan he should have told Bill Callahan that that you can't challenge force out absolutely and I, I'd be surprised if he didn't because I mean that's part of what you have to do because if Callahan says I'm challenging that he was in bounds and Carollo's got to tell him you can't challenge a force out and I would be surprised if Callahan would would think that he was in bounds. Right. I mean, so he, if he's challenging, he has to he has to say that he was forced out of bounds. After reviewing the play, it was determined the receiver caught the ball in the air. However, he did not get either feet in bounds. Therefore, the play stands as called incomplete. Fast. Well, point is no good. He didn't get either Oakland feet in bounds. He's yeah. charged with a timeout. Well, for what it's worth, at least the Raiders are clearly back in the game at 34 to 21. Thank you. Okay. Six oh six remaining, and again, in checking with Mike Pereira, the official Bill Carolla would have told Bill Callahan, "You can't challenge the force that part." Bill wanted to challenge. The fact that maybe he had come in. So at that point, you're, what you're doing is you're challenging with your heart. Right. And or someone told him to challenge and yeah. didn't know you couldn't challenge a force out. Onside kick by Janikowski. No. They'll send it deep and try to create a three and out. Well, that's a live ball. Yes, it is. Not any longer. Carl Williams downs it in the end zone. ABC Sports coverage of the Super Bowl is being brought to you by Budweiser. The best things in life are the things that are true. Budweiser, AOL Broadband, everything you want instantly. And Anger Management starring Adam Sandler and Jack Nicholson. Well, it was 34 to 3. John, I never thought I would dust off the You Believe in Miracles, but <laughs> I got to tell you. You're just getting it ready. Well, you? I You're just getting it ready. Some form of it, but I'll tell you, if there's going to be any kind of miracle, the Raider defense has to step up right now and make some plays and, and not allow a first down here. First and ten from the 20 yard line. Stop him on first down. Pittman through the middle, stopped by Travy and Smith. Yeah, and by here I mean this set of downs. I mean this first, second, and third, they, they have to they have to stop them and get the ball back. And then they have to get a score. Then you can start, you know, talking about onside kicks and those kinds of things. Isn't this so true now in all sports that that leads don't mean what they used to remember mm. in basketball? A lead would mean something. In baseball, yeah. you'd get a seven or eight run lead, the game was over. And Football, you get a couple touchdown lead, the game was over. Not in these days. This looked like a lock I got to say about a half hour ago. This is Pittman. And now it's third down. Can they stop him here? You know, John, you don't, you don't want to, it, I don't want to do a rank second guess, but when you're Oakland and you're down, Porter scores, and you're, well, you're thinking about a two point conversions, but if you go for the three extra points, it would be 34 24 right now and I think at 34 9 you know you're thinking I, I need two to make it 34 11 but if you really think it through 34 10 34 17 34 24 is a touchdown and a field goal now they need yeah, two touchdowns. that's what I always I didn't I didn't pay any attention to that two point stuff until right at the end of the game because if you start doing that too certain they have a cards this is when you do it and that's when you do it I never I never did believe in that but you know but it's it's big when when Gramatica doesn't get that field goal and when oh, yeah. fumbles that thing now, now 
now that takes three points off so that gives them you know another situation that they didn't have when they went for two points so there's there's so many things that happen in the game and the score as it goes that you know each situation changes each situation sure and they need as I say two touchdowns now also that challenge cost them a timeout that's really the the down side of, of, of a challenge that you have no chance to win yeah that was a strange thing I mean you know I mean as you said maybe his heart but I mean I don't I don't believe that he really knew that that you can't challenge a force out and the Raiders just just called a timeout defensively here as play resumes so they've now used two they're down to one third down and seven from the 23 yard line and Johnson throws it's all stop and that's a huge first down. And that's the guy that you want to get the ball to out in the flat if you need that first down because Allstott can get out there in the sideline and run it like a fullback. And that's exactly what he does here. You get him out in the flat. You see he's the fullback. They start on play pass. Here he comes out here. He gets that ball. Now, right now, he turns into a fullback. And he just knows where that marker is. And he gets up past the marker and gets the first down right there. the 32 Pittman at third and seven I mean, you think about it if nothing else it's worth about two minutes to Tampa because that's about what it would take to run the, the three extra plays right and and John Gruden is going to do that I and mean, he's going to use all that time because you know he knows how to do these kinds of things and the Raider defense needed to play they didn't get it I'm not sure exactly what that timeout was either neither neither do I they lose us. So they're just getting tired. I mean, they, you know, I don't know. Maybe they didn't have enough guys in there because the guys that they have in there right now in defense are awfully tired. And now they have one timeout plus the two minute warning. Second down and 10 from the 32. Pittman again. Punched up. Travian Schmidt. Now we come up to another big third down play. And the Raiders, the Raiders are going to take a timeout here as well. So, well, it's Cooper. And they did the same thing. It's the second time. I mean, they, they, they took the timeout right after the play this time. And the last third down, they, they, they took the timeout right after the play. I mean, I'm still trying to figure out this utilization of timeouts here. Second half for the Raiders here. You've got Porter, the play that was initially ruled out of the end zone, but then a touchdown, the block, Tim Johnson and Eric Johnson. And then, of course, Rice over the middle, but then the review off the two-pointer, the challenge, a timeout. A timeout on the, the first set of downs here. Now a timeout here. You know, Cooper was rolling around. That would have been an injury timeout, and the clock would have restarted at 25. So now Oakland's out of timeouts. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. I mean, I can't figure out any reason that they would have taken a timeout each time after second down because I don't think it was a substitution Ball thing. Play, and we'll wind the clock. Oakland has two charge timeouts, one remaining. All right, so what they've done here is they've taken, since the injury superseded the timeout, they can get the timeout back. And they'll wind the clock, and that's exactly what the case is. Like that's why I couldn't figure this out. I mean, I'm looking at Cooper rolling around. I'm saying, what are you taking a timeout for? I thought they took the timeout before Cooper rolled around. Uh, well, or maybe it was a simul, it was a simultaneous thing. Yeah, and there, the injury actually superseded the timeout, so they get a break here. Then the clock gets wound down from 25 seconds, and here we go on third and nine. But I still don't know why you would have wanted to take a timeout had they given you the timeout had it not been superseded. <laughs> All I know is that the defense has to stop him here for the Raiders to have a decent chance. Pittman around the bend, and then he's taken down. It's a great tackle by Eric Barton. And in comes the punting group. And one of the things this year that, that has seemed fouled up in a lot of games to me is clock management. You know, and using timeouts and using things, you know, when you, when you didn't need them, and then, you know, you get to the point at the end of the game when you really need them, and then you don't have them and time runs out. Sure. So right now they have one plus the two-minute warning. 
Tupa had his last punt blocked, fumbled a snap on the field goal. Raiders looking for the block. Here they come. Can't get there. 22. Darian Gordon looking for room. Nothing but red shirts. And that's the 26. That's the problem with a punt block. When you don't get the punt block, then you don't have any blockers downfield, and you're really not going to get a return. Here comes Lynch. Here's the most recent mic'd up with John. We're going to be fine. Nothing cheap, but we got to stay alive on the rush. Don't let him step up. That's what I'm saying. No way they'll beat us if we don't get anything up top in the rush. It's very important, okay? But they did give him something up on top, and that was a Jerry Rice thing. You know, that's what Monty Kiffin just told you. know, Keep the pass rush going. Don't let him step up. Don't give him anything up on top. And they let Jerry Rice run right through the post on him. 74 yards from the end zone with 244. Gannon to the outside. Rice and out of bounds. Shoved out right at the marker by Dwight Smith. Four catches. And the clock keeps running, so they said that the play ended with a tackle inbounds. First and ten from the 37. Gannon. And down he goes. Nobody home. Secondary does his job. Stopped at the 38-yard line. Trying to get a playoff before the two-minute warning. Yeah, he had Jerry Rice there. He had Jerry Rice open in the middle and didn't see him. I think if the Raiders can get another first down here, they can take another shot at the post because you can get in there on this defense now. Well, right now, that's the two-minute warning, so they'll play the final 120 seconds with only one timeout. Down by 13. So at the two minute warning now the ball is at the 38 yard line Tampa Bay up by 13 second down and nine upcoming for Gannon and the Raiders. One Oakland timeout left. I just had a vote for the MVP of the game, Al. And? I'm, I'm not going to say that. Okay. I don't, I don't know, because we still have horse trailer. We still have all that thing. And it's probably not going to be the player I voted for anyway. Should you put it in pencil? No, I put it in pen. It's gone. It's already it's done. Already, it was whisked away. Second down and nine. Gannon under pressure. Look out from behind. Sack. Ball loose. Raiders recover at the 31 yard line but a huge play Mo Collins winds up with the football so the Raiders still have it. You know the first guy that flushed him out though we, we, we talked about flushing and making a move and getting out of the rhythm was was, was was Simeon Rice. And just watch here he's going to come from right here and, and you see again he just takes the inside on Sims and he goes right through Middleton goes right through that double team. Third and 18 and this is going to write a finish. Derek Brooks, who ran back three interceptions for touchdowns in the regular season, does it to cement the Super Bowl. Well, could there be a better way for the Buccaneers to put the ultimate exclamation point on it than the number one defense with the number one defender intercepting a pass and taking it to the end zone? You know, and that's what Derek Brooks does. That's what Rich Gannon was worried about. He knows that, you know, you know that they just sit there and they and they squeeze things. And the guy that squeezes things is Derek Brooks. He didn't get him until the last two minutes, but he finally got him. And that was right after I voted for the MVP. Uh oh. <laughs> hey, let me have that back. <laughs> I started to show you Simeon Rice is who I voted for, by the way. A bunch of guys on that side of the ball. Yeah, I think it has to be a defensive guy. I mean, they, that, you know, it was funny, you know, we talked about this earlier.
We asked John Gruden, you know, who do you think is going to make a big play and win for you in the fourth quarter? And he brought up my defense. Yeah. He said they're like a great closer in baseball. Four picks of Gannon tonight. And, and, and this is what they do so well. I mean, they're back now because they know they have to pass so, so Brooks can get his depth. And again, he's just watching the quarterback all the way. So he just drops, 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 reads, and then squeezes. That's the thing. You expect him to be out there in the left. And when you throw the ball, he ends up right in the middle of the field. Do they think he's going to be out there by the numbers? And he does that better than anyone. He's out there by the numbers, and then he squeezes in, and that's where he gets his interception. You know, and the funny thing about it is, is the Raiders knew that was going to happen. John Gruden, I think, knew that was going to happen. A year ago, Gruden is the coach of the Raiders. He has one year left on his contract. Remember, Tampa Bay, we mentioned before, when Parcells spurned them, they looked at Oakland first. And it's my understanding the Raiders wanted about 15 million bucks. And Tampa said no. And then they went out and they, as you look at the papers and the T-shirts, then they looked at Marvin Lewis, didn't sign him. They looked at a couple of college coaches. They went to Mariucci. And then one of the things is when Mariucci was thinking about going to Tampa, and Oakland thinks about the fact that Gruden plays on his contract and goes to San Francisco, that, I think, forced the issue, and Tampa and Oakland were able to come to an agreement with how Gruden would wind up going to Florida. Right, and the, and the Glazier family was really looking like they didn't know what the heck they were doing. And they come out and they made this move and it was worth every penny. I mean, if if you could give those draft choices and that money to get this guy who could bring his team in this position and win a Super Bowl, he is worth everything they pay him and everything they gave for him. They look like the Keystone Cops and now they're going to hoist the Lombardi Trophy in a few minutes. 18 yard line. Marcus Knight brings it back up to the 27. We're all here to accomplish uh, one mission in the NFL, and that's to become a world champion and hold that trophy. And uh, to be number one in this league is uh, an unbelievable accomplishment. I think of Lee Flowers of the Pittsburgh Steelers because Pittsburgh owns Tampa. Certainly did on a Monday night. He called them uh, their paper champions. Well, we pick up tomorrow's paper. They will be the champions. And Warren Sapp is going to have something to say about that. And I think that's the legacy that they were talking about. If, if we have a great defense, we're not a great defense until we win a Super Bowl. We win a Super Bowl, then we're all kinds of champions. Screen dropped. Well, John. It's, it won't be long because you're going to be second on this list, and there it is. Gruden will become the youngest man to coach a, a Super Bowl champion. You were a little bit uh, more, well, 40 and three-quarter years old, what, 26 years ago? Well, and, and congratulations to John Gruden because I know how it feels. I mean, in, in you know, once I said in your life, it's, it's the biggest thing that could ever happen to you, maybe just in your football life, but, but this is a thing that, you have now and and you will have forever jolly up to the 33 yard line so still the youngest coach in the league here comes the bath that feels a little bit better tonight than it did last week in Philadelphia when that he got the bath and then he had to stand out there for about 12 more minutes yeah but I'll tell you another thing a Super Bowl bath is better than a championship <laughs> bath especially in San Diego rice Taken down by Corey Ivey. So the Buccaneers win the NFC South. Brad Johnson. At one time, Minnesota's starting quarterback. Then he's Washington starting quarterback. And remember, it looked for all the world he was going to go back to Baltimore when he was a free agent a couple of years ago and signed with Brian Billick. But they only offered him one year. He said, I've got to go down to Tampa. Starts with a defensive coach in Dungy. Then he gets Gruden. He said, Gruden, just, he's brought out the best in me. Isn't that something when the winning quarterback can pick up his son and says, who loves you, and give him a oh, kiss? Oh, man. I mean, that's, that's what, when you get in this situation, and it's going to be the best time of your life, you really want to make a memory. And I think that's what Brad Johnson is doing right now. I think that's what all the Buccaneer players and coaches and fans and everyone, you have to remember this all your life.
That's tip, and that's a fifth pick of the game by Dwight Smith. And again, Dwight Smith is going to take it down the sideline into the end zone. Wow. Just as I'm learning that Dexter Jackson has been named the most valuable player of the game for his two picks, Dwight Smith gets his second and his second touchdown. And I'll tell you, and he's playing because, again, that's the defense that the Bucs played this whole game. Was, it was four defensive linemen, two linebackers, five defensive backs, and Dwight Smith was that fifth or extra defensive back. So what do we do? Have a recount? Rick Aston was back. I'll vote for Dwight Smith. No, but I think I mean I still stay with with mine. I mean Dexter Jackson. And congratulations to him and and everyone. But 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 this thing was won and controlled by the defensive line. That's it was. That's where that's where it all started for this Buck team. Yeah. And I, I know it's Florida and I know it's hanging chads and all that stuff. But Jackson's two picks were. Were usually important. I mean, this is just this is a uh, a cosmetic pick right here by Smith. Pick right. Yeah, but and and my guy, Simeon Rice didn't make it, did he? But my, no. my guy. I mean, he he raised havoc you. the whole game. I told and you. the big thing he did, he worked over there on Barry Sims, and he gave him a speed rush. But the thing that I liked about it, he took the inside a lot today. And when when Simeon Rice takes the inside, he reminds me a lot of Charles Haley. You know, Charles Haley. Was, was one of the best natural pass rushers I've ever seen because he would always take the inside hard. Here's Gramatica now for the point after. Gramatica jumped. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> well, well, he jumped and hurt his knee, and then, and then he wasn't jumping anymore. You know, he'd just go through through a little celebration. That time he said, what the heck, he jumped. All right, who do we put, who are we putting on the horse trailer tonight? Well, you know, I, I already made my thing. I, I took Simeon Rice, and I, I think it should be a defensive lineman or the defensive line or something like that because that's what I believe was the, the biggest contributor to this victory for the Buccaneers. So anyway, what do you say? The whole D. I mean, oh, maybe oh, Monty. Oh, 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 you mean the whole defensive team? Why not? Yeah. I mean, just take, you know, take the defensive unit. I mean, it's it's just, it's the Super Bowl. We have the whole side of the trailer for it. One more mic'd up from John Lynch. Here it is. Run game! Run game! A world champs, baby! So sedate when you see him and all of a sudden, you know, you know that old oxymoron, clean dirt? That's what John Lynch is. And then out in the fit, out in the file, man. He's a hitter. He's all those things. And John Gruden, like I says, you have it and you'll have it for the rest of your life. And they could never take it away from you. Well, Malcolm Glazer and, and the Glazer family. And who would have thought? I mean, they're going through this whole crazy thing last year we're trying to find a coach and then they get him and they they opened up the season don't forget with a loss I mean Gruden's first game down there was an overtime loss to New Orleans but they never lost two games in a row we said at the top John said the best back to back games they played this season were the last two in the playoffs and they have saved the very best for last and it will be over with the tackle of Chris Cooper here from 0 26 to Super Bowl champions.